From Anaheim Stadium, Anaheim, California, ESPN presents the Brigham Young Cougars against the 49ers of Long Beach State. Anaheim Stadium, Southern California, just about ready to go. The coin tossing ceremony going out at center field. There, the referee who will be working the game, Roger McMinn. Linesman will be Stuart Ross. Bill DeBaldiago is the field judge. Jerry Jury, the back judge. George Shoot is the umpire. And John Yabaran, the line judge. All of the officials are from the PCAA. There are no WAC conference officials here. BYU will receive, defend the goal to our right. A slight breeze, temperature about 82 degrees. Just about clear skies all above. And the two coaches for today's game. On the left, Dave Curry. Curry, now in his fifth season in Long Beach, is 24 and 19. He was the PCAA Coach of the Year last year. Lavelle Edwards on the right, 75, 30 and 1. His record. He begins his 10th season at BYU. His teams have won or shared six WAC titles. He was named the WAC and District 8 Coach of the Year last year. Both of these guys have excellent programs in. Curry is a very enthusiastic coach, as we mentioned at the top. He does have a tremendous rebuilding job this year. Eleven of his uh, players last year, starters, went into the pros, so that's a real rebuilding job. Lavelle Edwards just throws the ball so well. Everybody talks about the offense, and I mentioned earlier that defense, that 4-3 that uh, the Cougars used, is something that is really tough. It's going to have to carry him a little early. We're ready to go. Guy Johnson, number 19 for Long Beach State. Number 94 joining him there is Rich Gonzalez. There are your two deep receivers. Val Sikiyama, number 23. Bruce Hanson, number 34. And our ball game is underway. Sikiyama. Out to about the 20 yard line, and he was nailed immediately there by Long Beach State's Ken Fall. So BYU will line up first and 10. There is their offensive backfield. Jim McMahon, the All American quarterback, Scott Pettis, and Wayman Hamilton are the running backs. And the receivers are Glenn Kozlowski, number 25, Dan Plater, number 86. The offensive line, your tight end, is Gordon Hudson. There, the front line, Rogers, along with Eldridge. Bart uh, Oates, Calvin Close, and Vince Stroh. First and ten. And the aerial attack about to begin now. First down. McMahon in the air. Completes out here to number 95, to number 25, Glenn Kozlowski. First down, and they started off right away. Didn't take the Cougars very long. They come out with split back, straight drop back. McMahon, very active, waits for the young freshman Kozlowski to break over the middle, splits the seam of the zone right there, and Kozlowski's going to be a dandy. The Cougars have the first and 10. 24 yards on the play. They spot the ball out at the 44 yard line. Two wide receivers line up to the right side now. Kozlowski, Neil Balholm is in there. Balholm is the man in motion. Pitch back goes to Pettis. He's to the 45 yard line and tripped up there and brought down there by Ken Bielman, number 63. Bielman, the left inside linebacker. You're, it's a 3 4 Long Beach State defense with Daryl Harris, Greg Schoonover, and Anthony Swain. The linebackers outside are Joe Donahue and Michael Otis. Inside linebackers, David Howard and Ken Bielman, who just made the tackle. There are the cornerbacks, Ray and Anderson outside, John Carr and Worthington inside. Second down and nine. McMahon off balance, throw way out of bounds. The ball caught, but way out of bounds by Dan Plater, number 86. Coverage on the play by Dan Worthington coming up from his free safety spot. Third and nine. There's Jim McMahon. That's his story. They used the Tennessee bubble that time. That is, they backed the middle guard, Long Beach did, off the line of scrimmage. That's Schoonover. We'll see a lot of that. They went with an in tackle twist. The one loss BYU had last year was to New Mexico, and they were, uh, really went after McMahon. Long Beach could be doing the same thing today. They want to go after him. Sick the quarterback. Bruce Hanson is in. Kozlowski is out for BYU. It's a third down nine. Interior movement by the defensive line of Long Beach State. McMahon dragged down, but there are flags down at the line of scrimmage. Somebody, either Schoonover, Harris, or Swain, moved. 
for Long Beach State before the ball was snapped. First penalty of the game coming up. A very warm, warm afternoon for a football game. Roger McMahon indicating offside Long Beach State. The 49ers, Long Beach from Anaheim, approximately 20 miles. They play all of their home games here at Anaheim Stadium, which seats about 69,000. They're looking for a crowd today of about 35,000. Five yard penalty will move the ball out to midfield. It'll still be short of a first down. It'll be third down and four. The stunt was effective. However, the 49ers were offside, but that is the way a lot of people feel to play the Cougars. You can't sit back and McMahon is going to pick you to death. You've got to go get him and take your chances. Just try not to give up your passing lanes when you rush. Goslowski right, play here left. McMahon on third and short. Let's it fly and it's out of bounds. It's caught but out of bounds. By Plater so it will be fourth down and the 49ers have held. So young McMahon not able to move his club except for one first down. That is Plaster's record for last year. Pretty good wide receiver the young man from Reno 6'1 180 pounder. Lewis Littlemeyer. Deep for Long Beach State. And the kicker is Mike Meads, number one. He's a sophomore out of Cody, Wyoming. <laughs> Liedemeyer waiting. Fair catch call somewhere around the 12 yard line. And that's where Long Beach will have the ball. It's a 38 yard putt with no return. 49ers in possession for the first time. Running off the field now for Long Beach State, Lewis Liedelmeyer, who is normally their outstanding flanker. There is the Long Beach State offensive lineup. Angelo Gaska, the quarterback, flanked by Doug Land and Tim Gross. He's got Liedelmeyer as a flanker along with Daryl Stokes, the split end. The offensive line, Donnelly's the tight end, Mejia, Myers, Heinemann, Heron, and Bach. Gaska, the handoff goes. Well, they've got Alfred Rowe in there as a running back now, number 24. There's the defense for BYU. John Ramich is the left end. Morgan, Mike Morgan, is the tackle. Pelusila Filalanga is the defensive tackle. And Brad and I, both Samoan, the defensive end. Your linebackers, Apu on the left side, Whittingham in the middle, and uh, O'Neill. A couple of Brady brothers, along with McKee and Homo in the defensive backfield. Out across the 15 to about the 16 yard line. Well, they give the 17 yard line. This Brad Ane coming in to make the hit. Ball carrier Tim Gross. That's Gross, the youngster from Riverside, California, a junior, 5'9, 195. We've got a shaken up ball player out there. That's David McKee. He is the left cornerback out of Holden, Utah, a senior, and he's shaken up on that play. Pretty good football player was a walk on. Had an excellent game last year against UTEP. It was the 100-yard dash champ in high school. It looks like he'll be all right. He's coming off under his own power. Long Beach State now will have a third down. They've got about five yards to go. Of the 17, 12:37 to go. First quarter, no score. Fullhouse backfield. Rowe is in there along with Land and Gross. Gross. Gross was turned inside by Mike O'Neill and finished off by Neil Balholm. That's the man who turned him in right there. Mike O'Neill, the white weak side linebacker on the right. It's been all power eye for Long Beach and very ineffective here. They try to run at the bubble. That is the linebacker standing uh, in the 4-3 defense and brings up a punting situation. Okay, Mike Horan, a senior from Fullerton, will be doing the kicking, and it is Val Sikahima, a lone safety back. That's Sikahima. S I K A H E M A. Just away. Sikahima at his own 45. And brought down as he crosses midfield to the Long Beach State 49 yard line. A 40 yard punt, a six yard return. Tackled in there by Ken Bielman. So it'll be BYU's ball in excellent field position somewhere around midfield. No score in the ball game. Each team has had a crack at it on offense. 
We'll take a look at uh, BYU this time. I got to believe they'll start throwing to their backs now. Long Beach doing a good job on the wide receivers. That means that the backs are going to come out without underneath coverage from the linebackers. Let's see if uh, Jim McMahon starts to go to him. He puts Plater off to the right. Kozlowski is over there. Backfield includes Pettis and Hamilton. Motion Kozlowski. McMahon back. He flips it out. Right side. It's complete. Pretty good move down to the 41 yard line. That one by Scott Pettis. Tackled by Grandy Schoonover. This is a little scat back, split backs. McMahon straight back, looking over the defense, gets good blocking up front. Here's Pettis, 5'9, 172. Gives you all the shakes and moves. That's a good linebacker, Howard, with an arm tackle, and you can't do that to Pettis because he can move it and he gets some decent yardage. A seven yard pickup, second down and three. No score, but BYU trying to get something going. Wayman Hamilton, close to the first down. First man to get to him was Joe Donahue, number 64, the left outside linebacker from Santa Ana. They may have to do some measuring. From here, it looks short. Cougars uh, like to run behind Calvin Close, number 63, the left guard. They also have a very fine center, Bart Oates, number 50, with just an inside hand up there, just a shade short. Third and short, uh, don't be surprised. McMahon doesn't put it up, and that man likes to throw third and short, Lavelle Edwards. What a coaching career he has had. Both of these teams lost their season opener last year and then came on. Long Beach lost to Northern Illinois 16-9. BYU lost to New Mexico 25-21, then put together good win streaks. BYU's won 11 in a row. Long Beach State has won seven in a row. Both won conference titles last year. Third down and inches. Obvious offside by BYU. The whole right side of their line jumped off. Manuel Rogers and the tight end David Mills. Take a look at it. Looks like the right tackle Rogers is the first one to lose the snap count. There he is. Big Steve just gets a little confused and jumps out of there. So that's going to cost the Cougars. Instead of being second and short or third and short, that is, it'll be third and six in a passing situation. Referee. Roger McMinn moving the ball back to the Long Beach State 45. So it'll be third down at six. We've got 10 minutes, 45 seconds remaining as we look at Lavelle Edwards, head coach of BYU. He's had some great quarterbacks, Stu, but uh, I think he'd be the first to admit that the best one he's ever had, including Mark Wilson and Giff Nielsen, is on the field today in the form of Jim McMahon. McMahon. Originally from Utah, from Detroit, New Jersey, actually. Lived in the Bay Area, San Jose for a while, then went back to Utah. A lot of time to throw. Look at this. Wide open at the 22 yard line. First down, BYU. You give him that much time, he's going to do it. Wayman Hamilton makes the catch. 23 yards on the play. John Carr makes the hit. First down, BYU. Well, there's the strength of McMahon. They come after him. A good-looking stunt as they put great pressure on. He'll go to his left. This is the thing that he does so well. Waits for somebody to get open, and this is where he just kills you. Hamilton, the big fullback, makes the play, and the Cougars are in business. Great human interest story on that young man who led the nation in total offense last year. 47 touchdowns. My goodness. 32 NCAA passing records. In the corner. Over the catch. Touchdown BYU Kozlowski. But there's a penalty marker down. Yeah, they caught one of the guards holding and it'll be brought back. It was a tremendous play to Kozlowski. What a pattern he ran. But it is holding on the interior. It looked like the right side. I'm guessing just out of the uh, corner of my eye that it was the right guard Manuel. There's hey, Lavelle at, Edwards and that tells it all. He doesn't believe it. Here you go now. Right guard drops back, Manuel. Good pattern by Kozlowski, the little freshman. This kid is going to be a winner. In the corner, the ball is laid up there soft. We can go get it. A great catch, but it's all for naught as the Cougars do pick up the holding penalty. Uh, initial reaction, the right guard, Manuel, was the one that they caught. 
So instead of a first and ten or a touchdown, they're back on their own on the Long Beach State 33. The first down marker would be at the 12. It'll be first and 21. BYU, look at the story for their success over the last five years. More wins than any other NCAA Division I team. McMahon comes out firing. Great catch at the 10 yard line. Super catch over there. Turned in by Neil Bellholm, a 23 yard play. Kevin Ray made the knock. But they got themselves a 21 yard gain and they got themselves a first down and 10. Reverse motion, Valholm back to the line of scrimmage, cuts it up field and is able to beat the zone. McMahon just puts it right on the money. Look at this catch, though, Stu. Boy, that's what makes you great when you have somebody who makes a fine catch like Valholm. Valholm from Vancouver, Washington. That's mixed men's story for today. Four out of six, 77. And they're knocking at the door. First and 10. They're outside the 10. Pettis. Give the Cougars six. Scott Pettis, the junior from Stockton, California, built close to the ground at 5'9", 172, and he goes 10 and a half yards for a touch, and BYU gets on the board. They doubled down on the right side, and the offensive guard, Eldridge, pulled and shows you how it's supposed to be done. Excellent play, and the Cougars pick up their first six points of the year. Gunther will try the extra point. That's Kurt Gunther, number two. He's a junior out of Provo. Tom Homo will be doing the holding. And the Cougars take a seven to nothing lead as BYU gets on the scoreboard first to inaugurate the 1981 college football season on ESPN. Let's look at that touchdown again. Well, that 15 yard penalty didn't bother them. Here they come. They double down, pull Eldridge right there. Into the end zone, almost tripped up, but Pettis is uh, a tough little back, not very big. He gets the job done, and BYU has the lead. Okay, BYU 7, Long Beach State nothing. More right after this. Here we go. Long Beach State now to get on offense for the second time. The scoring drive, six plays, 49 yards after the recovery at midfield. That big 21-yard pass. Belone brought it down, and then you got Pettis taking it in for ten and a half yards for the touchdown. And Long Beach State now try to get back into this football game. Bryce Wilson is deep, man doing the kicking off right down. You can see him. Number two, the man that just put the extra point on the board. That's Gunther. The other man is Bill Urban, number 26. He's at the top of your screen. Wilson closest to you and our ball game continues. Wilson on the goal line. And dumped at about the 19 yard line. Hit initially by Kevin Walker, a defensive back. And so Long Beach State down 7 0. Will bring the ball on offense for the second time behind quarterback Angelo Gasca. The story on young Gasca. Replacing Starkey quarterback is that he has always been a winner. He played his high school ball at Venice High near here. He played his junior college ball at Santa Monica. That's his story last year behind Starkey. Tim Gross stacked up in the middle by the BYU defensive unit. Leading the charge in there was Brad and I number 93 the defensive end from Hawaii helped out by Kyle Whittingham Kyle is one of two brothers on this club his brother Gary is the backup middle linebacker Kyle they are the son of a system coach named Fred Whittingham a former pro football player Philadelphia Eagles the fake to gross Gaska. Pursuit by Brad and I, number 93, the 252 pound senior defensive end. That play just didn't get off the ground. Davis was held up in the secondary. An excellent job by Cougar cornerback uh, Brady. He just got the job done. There's Dave Curry. Curry was an assistant coach at Stanford for seven years before coming over here. BCAA championship. 
Long Beach State after they won their last seven in a row. In trouble is Doug Land as the BYU defense swarms in on him. Very Leading the underrated. Defensive charge, Mike Morgan, the defensive tackle out of Salt Lake City, and Pulasia Filianga. They're very underrated, Stu. People out west know they can play, but because Jim McMahon gets so much uh, press and the offense gets so much ink also, people tend to forget how good they play defense. There's Horan's story. 41 yards per kick last year. Sikahima. Back out to about the 36 or 37 yard line. A 47 yard punt by Horan. About a three yard return. BYU leading in this ballgame 7 0. Irwin Anderson in on the hit. Number nine, young Jim McMahon, a senior. Now calls Roy, Utah, his hometown. Stuck a fork in his eye when he was six. And they say that he has 60, 60 80 vision. Yeah, what if he could really see? In one eye. <laughs> yeah. Because the guy throws terrific. Where's glasses when not playing football? Pretty good catch over there. Pretty fair catch by Dan Plater. He had Dan Worthington almost hanging on him. Good for 20 yards and a BYU first down. Dan Plater, the split end from Reno, Nevada. They use all the receivers, five out on the pattern, and McMahon just makes it so easy because he's got such a tremendous touch. They're utilizing everything. It's really tough to defense BYU. Once again, the people feel that if you go after McMahon, that's your best chance because if you give him any time at all, he's going to eat you alive. Neil Ballholm in to replace Kozlowski is a wide receiver for BYU. They have a first and 10 at the 44 of the 49ers. As McMahon continues his aerial attack. This time he hits inside to about the 36 yard, six yard line. Huh? It's caught by Ballholm, Neil Ballholm. This guy's got a Roman Gabriel type arm. That's how they describe him. He isn't that big, six foot. And a lot of pros question, can you play at six foot? Yeah, you watch him. You guarantee he can. Look at the gun. Off a stiff front foot, Jim McMahon from Roy, Utah, just does it all. He's already got huge statistics, and we've still got six minutes left in the first quarter. Picked up eight, second down two. He moves Pettis over. Gives it to Hamilton. First down. Inside the 30 brought down by David Howard right inside linebacker out of Long Beach first down BYU at the 49 or 29 yard line got a good block from the center Oates look at his he cuts the nose guard gets the job done nose guard slides off and they're able to pick up the first down Oates is a gamer along with close probably the two strongest linemen offensively for the uh, Cougars. Later is off to the left side. Val home to the right. McMahon intercepted. This is Kevin Ray. There's a penalty marker down. So is Ray. Long Beach State has the ball at the 30 yard line. It was intended for Val home. He deflected in the air. Ray waited for it to come down, but there's a penalty marker down. And it appears to be against BYU. Long Beach State will decline the penalty. They'll have possession of the football. This Ray has mental toughness. He was an alternate starter last year. Long Beach, if they're going to stay with this ball club, needs a break like that. And Ray gives him a tremendous lift as uh, the 49ers take over. We've got 541 left in the quarter. Let's take another look, Stu. Lavelle Edwards not happy. This is a great job by Ray because the ball is thrown pretty well. But Ray just goes out and competes with Balholm. Makes the play. That's what the old tip drill is about. They do that every day, and it pays off. Angelo Gasca brings him up. First and ten, Long Beach State. Cougars of BYU lead it 7 0, midway to the first quarter. Dave Doug Land. First man to get to him, Mike O'Neill. Two number 35. 35 in the white O'Neill, 35 in the yellow and brown, Doug Land. Change the set that time to a double wing. Trying to get man-on-man uh, -man coverage, get Land going. Land is one of the better fullbacks they've ever had at Long Beach State. Strong. He's just going against a very tough D. Second down, six. Oh, pretty fair grab over there. Gee, 
Lewis Liedlmeyer reached out with everything he could and just pulled that ball in at the 44 yard line and Long Beach State has its first first down of the ball game. Six for BYU. Dave McKee was covering but there's nothing he can do on oh. a pass play like that. You said it all. What a grab. And the ball was on the outside half away from the body of McKee so that the, the catch had to be a great catch or else it's incomplete. No interception. First and ten. Long Beach State on their own 45. Gross. About two yards. Everybody in on it. The two Brady brothers and the Fillingunga. Filling up. O'Neill also got a piece of it. It's really tough to run inside against that 4-3. BYU is so much bigger and stronger, it appears, from up here than Long Beach. you got to run at the linebackers, possibly trapped inside, because so far the running game has been nil for Long Beach. Second down, seven. Grant Warhurst is in there. Land is out. Gross behind him. The fake to Gross. Gaska with plenty of time puts it up and it's incomplete over there near the 45 yard line. A diving try over there by Liedlmeyer, but he couldn't quite come up with this one. Strong safety. Mark Brady really does an exceptional job here. Here's a look at the zone coverage of BYU. And number 12, Brady, just gets over to give that underneath coverage. Normally you'd expect this from a linebacker, but uh, the Cougars do a tremendous job. Dick Felt has been there a long time as their defensive backfield coach. You saw a great example of why they're so competitive. Four minutes to play first quarter. BYU leading it by a score of 7-0. Yaska flipping off to Gross. Gross maintains his balance. Still going. Stepped out of bounds at the 30. Got up to about the 20, but he actually put a foot out at the 30-yard line. Long Beach State will have a first down at their own at the uh, BYU 30. It's a 23 yard carry after the catch there by Mr. Gross. Their best offensive effort. Watch Gross break a couple of tackles. He's very strong. Look at those bow legs, Stu. Those bow legged people do not get hurt. The Floyd Littles of the world. Look at that effort. He also is a very strong blocker. I like this kid. Gets a good hit right there. He's out of Mount San Jacinto Junior College. Gained 740 yards, scored nine touchdowns. <laughs> Pretty good play on the far side over there. That to Grant Warhurst. In there at fullback for Doug Land. Picked up a couple. Stopped by David Apu. Look at the signals as Curry gives him to the sidelines over there. He's saying the plays in Dave Curry. Every once in a while he'll send him in and occasionally he'll uh, use a wig wag. Dave is very intense. I like the enthusiasm. I like the way he deals with his kids. He's very straight, uh, really straight lines him up front. And the kids appreciate that. Curry's teams have broken or tied 23 school records in his four years as head coach. Actually, he never had the football. Fallen on immediately by Randy Bach, but there was not a completed pass there. Brandon Flint hovering in the neighborhood. Pretty good hit over there by Chuck Ian, number 78 for BYU, the junior defensive tackle. Brandon Flint, the defensive end, really played it well. 239, a sophomore out of Layton, Utah. BYU recruits California and Utah. They'll get into Arizona, get some Samoans. And those Samoan kids are tough. They'll hit you. Gross in land, the backfield now. Third down, eight. Gaskis pass. That pass was intercepted and picked off by Steve Brady. One of the twin Brady brothers from Oak Ridge Tennessee weak side safety number 13 and BYU has stopped the LB drive. That's how you're supposed to play that weak safety and Brady makes a great play on the infield. This is a baseball field. You can see the infield and Brady with a fine play. BYU leads it seven nothing with three minutes to play in the first quarter. The interception by Brady BYU takes over on the dirt part of the infield the stadium used by the California Angels Long Beach State is offside play continues. Wayman Hamilton carries is a flag thrown down after the hit. So we've got two penalties called one I know for offside against Long Beach State back at the line of scrimmage could be offsetting. Let's see. Appeared to be a face mask on that side, although I saw a clip too. We had three. They got two out of three. They ain't bad. Mm -hmm. Zip up the pockets. <laughs> well, old fella, offsetting penalties. That's right. Holding BYU 
And it is offside Long Beach State. Well, it's sure easy to call from Oh, here, man, aren't, aren't they uh, easy right up here. The old <laughs> I-7 failed me. Along with Irv Brown, I'm Stu Nahan. We hope you're enjoying our telecast on ESPN. Season opener for both squads, BYU, Long Beach State. Kind of a public relations school for Long Beach State to have this game against this nationally ranked team from BYU because USC and UCLA get a lot of the coverage in this area. Long Beach State getting a little bit of the headlines. Those schools don't begin play till next week. Look at how he runs around out there. Look at scurry, scurry, scurry. Finally, he's out of bounds. And he was hit as he went up out of bounds on the far side over there by Ken Fall, number 87, 85. He's wearing 85. Right inside linebacker. There's some interesting stats on McMahon. He can run a little bit too if you lose your lanes. An excellent job that time. Got to point out by number 15, Irwin Anderson. Played good pass defense, and that's why McMahon had to scramble. And that's the situation you want BYU in second and long. Second and eight, actually. Plater, wide left side. In motion, Pettis. Look at the time he's got the throw. Heaves it long. Did you see that catch by Kozlowski? It was an excellent catch, Stu. Of course, Long Beach thought that he pushed off. That's what Dave Curry is uh, questioning the uh, line judge on. Kozlowski, the young freshman, goes out to his right. He's going to beat the cornerback. But what an effort by McMahon. There's where uh, Long Beach felt that there was a push off. Kozlowski is going to be just sensational. Last year, Clay Brown, Scott Phillips. Really special, and now here's another young guy that's going to come along in that same mold. Kozlowski out of Carlsbad. He was actually born in Honolulu. Carlsbad just down the road toward San Diego from here. 49 yards on the play. Wyman Hamilton. No place at all there. Michael Otis, the first man to get to him, along with Ken Bielman. Kozlowski, we talked about. Played his high school ball at Carlsbad. You know, this young man, Kozlowski, he has a brother named Michael who plays for the Miami Dolphins right now. Played his ball, uh, college ball at Colorado. Played for Bill Mallory. Tough guy. I remember mm -hmm. he punctured a lung, wouldn't mm -hmm. come out of there. Played some offense, played some defense, 100 percenter. Well, Long Beach State saw that play coming all the way. And it was Rick Gonzalez who started it, Thomas Woods who finished it on the defensive unit for Long Beach State. Back on the 39, they lost about four. So it's going to be third down and 13. They've been very effective in a long yardage situation here by using reverse motion, letting one of those wide receivers run free in the secondary. Let's see if uh, Lavelle Edwards chooses to go with this. Ball on the 39. There's a minute left to go in the first quarter. Brigham Young leading it by a score of 7 0 over Long Beach State. Long cadence, McMahon. Grab at the 22 yard line by Neil Balholm, the junior from Vancouver, Washington, hit immediately by Dan Worthington, the free safety from Yorba Linda, California. First down, BYU, 18 yards. Well, the Cougars haven't read the script where they're supposed to have inexperienced wide receivers, and it takes a while because Balholm and Kozlowski have been sensational. Look at this catch. If there's a better one around today, I want to see it. Outstanding, and that's his second fine reception. Mr. McMahon has had a pretty good first half. Eight out of 11, 172 yards. He's been picked off once. First and 10 now on the 21 yard line. Intercepted in the end zone for Long Beach State. Picked off by Irwin Anderson, the right cornerback from San Diego. So just as BYU was trying to put more points on the board, the second interception of a McMahon pass. Long Beach State take it over again as they have stopped the Brigham Young drive. Gaska brings them up. Gross. A penalty marker goes down. The hit was made by Tom Homo, number 46. But there was a penalty marker down.
Let's watch and see in just a moment. Get that all set up for you. A penalty marker down and see what this penalty is. The clock shows four seconds left to play in the first half. The penalty apparently against Long Beach State. On the draw play, I thought 55 Scott Heron was the guy that they uh, detected holding. There's been no ground game for the 49ers at all because BYU is really difficult to run against. The best bet has been to uh, get them outside with Gross on the little swing pattern. Dave Curry. There's Dave Curry. Let's see if he agrees with the penalty, uh, Stu. Not totally. No, he says, I'm not inviting you for dinner. <laughs> Ball back to the eight yard line. We've got four seconds to play in the quarter. It is 7 0 Brigham Young. Long Beach State with a first and 22 back on their own eight. Too much time. Oh, no, the gun got off. That's the end of the first quarter. They couldn't get the play, and they wound up the clock as they went back up to line up. Let's look at that interception one more time, picked off by young quarterback. Well, Anderson does a great job, but once again, they still have a little inexperience with the receivers. McMahon, with both feet up in the air, throws the ball, trying to go to Kozlowski, and here's a great play by Anderson, add to the uh, interception by Ray, and the 49ers have done a job with their pass D. Okay, first quarter is in the pass now. At the end of the first 15 minutes of play, Brigham Young continues to lead Long Beach State by a score of 7 to nothing. All right, we begin the second quarter along with Herb Brown. I'm Stu Nahan. We hope you're enjoying our telecast here on ESPN as the flip goes out to Gross from Gaska. And he rolls it out past the 10 to about the 13 yard line. Hit by Kyle Whittingham, the middle linebacker, the senior from Provo, Utah. Whittingham really shows you that explosive burst. His pop is the defensive coordinator. His brother is his backup, and that's kind of a nice little family thing. Look at the difference in the yardage. Passing yardage, 172 to 36. Of course, Long Beach unable to move it on the ground. BYU hadn't been all that impressive through the ground either. McMahon has had two interceptions against him. His Gaskin now will go to the air. His arm was tucked in the air. It was pulled out by BYU, and they're going to have a touchdown. The ball came down. It's an 11-yard return. The ball came down in the hands of a BYU man, number 47. That would be Todd Shell, a backup linebacker. And Todd Shell, a sophomore from Mace, Arizona, waited for it after Gaska had his arm deflected as he was thrown up by Kyle Whittingham. Guy we were just talking about, Whittingham put the pressure on on a stunt. And you give BYU a cheap one here after your pass defense has done such a good job. And this is really uh, disastrous for Long Beach. They're down 13-0, 14-16 left to go in the quarter, in the half, that is. And uh, the Cougars will get another guy in to attempt this extra point. Homo will hold. Gunther will try the extra point. They didn't have 11 men on the field. They do now, the Cougars. Trying to make it a 14-0 ball game. Kick us up, and they've got their 14th point. So Gaska's arm, watch Whittingham hit his arm, and the ball come down in the arms of Shell. 59 on a stunt, just a little twist right here. It's going to open up. Nobody picks him up. They try to area block, and it doesn't work. They man block. I beg your pardon. Here's Whittingham, a great athlete. Gets Gaska to throw it up in the air. BYU leading in this ball game, 14 0, following the interception and touchdown return by Shell. Bryce Wilson and Bill Irvin are deep. Irvin is the nearest to us. Wilson, but eight yards deep in the end zone, neglects or declines to run it out. It'll be a touchback and brought back out to the 20 yard line, and it'll be first and 10. You no, know, uh, this, uh, pardon me. Go ahead. This month, ESPN is celebrating its second anniversary as the one and only national 24-hour total sports network. The two short years since ESPN first telecast, that was September 7 to 79, from 1 million homes to over 11 and a half. You want total sports? That's on ESPN. Gaska. Angelo winds up. Angelo with a bullet. And the pass is complete to Jim Donnelly, his tight end out of Long Beach. Lost the shoe, 
But the catch was made. They'll spot the ball on the 27. It's a pickup of seven, second and three, and the hit is by Kyle Whittingham. Donnelly goes out to get a, some equipment repaired. He made an excellent comeback on that play. He had a good offseason, really worked hard on the weights, and it pays off there as the Cougars have second and very short. Little Meyer goes wide up the top of the screen. Gaska pitching back to Timmy Gross. Nothing. Pursuit. Excellent pursuit by Brandon Flint. Flint, the sophomore from Layton, Utah. Second down and three. Make it third down and three now. Flint has been very impressive to me in this early going. He was a basketball player in high school, a backup a year ago. And he stepped right in, and what we've seen of him early, Stu, uh, looks like he's going to be a Danny in that tradition of Cougar defensive people. 49ers trying to get some sort of offense going. They had a drive going late in the first quarter. This is Gross again trying to get that third, three, four yards, and he's got the first down. He is across the 35 to about the 36 yard line, forced out of bounds by Todd Shell and by Dave McKee. Shell, the young man who just intercepted and returned for a touch. This is young Tim Gross, a junior from Riverside, 5'9, 198 pounder. That's his story for the course of the contest. Dave First Curry over there. State. Went to the short side that time, got a good block from Alfred Rowe, running to the short side of the field. That looked good. Harold Stokes now wide to the right. They haven't thrown to him yet. This is Gross. Pulisilla and Filianga waiting for him right up there in the middle. Got a little help from David Apu. That is not double talk. Pulisilla, P-U-L-U-S-I-L-A. Second name or last name, Filianga. F-I-L-I-A-G-A. From Hawaii, originally from Samoa. We have several Samoans on this team. Stokes is out. Lidl Meyer's in there. Bill Irvin is in there now as a running back. Long Beach State. Yes, good to throw. Second down. Incomplete. At the 20 yard line, it was David McKee who almost picked it off as he was going step for step along the far sidelines down there. Tented receiver was Irvin. I thought Gaska did a good job that time. He picked up the man coverage. McKee watched the wide receiver all the way. Normally when that happens, it is man coverage. If you watch the quarterback, it's going to be a zone. And that time, Gaskett did a good job. There's the story on Gaskett. Four out of nine, 43 yards. Third and long. Gaskett completes over here on the near side. It's complete, but I don't think he's going to get a first down. I went to Jimmy Jones, uh, rather to uh, Alfred Rowe, a running back. But he never got the first down out of it as Mark Brady was over to make the hit on number 24. And so it'll be punting time. And Mike Horan comes out for Long Beach State to do the kicking away. Val uh, Sakahime, Sakahima. Deep. By Sakahima. Horan's kick. He had a 47 yarder last time. Sakahima dropping back. And he makes a fair catch call, goes to his knees somewhere around the 10 or 11 yard line. Pretty good punt there, about 48 yards. So Rand has had a 47 yarder and a 48 yarder. And BYU with a 14 point lead and 12 minutes to play in the half now takes over on offense. McMahon coming out, leading his charges. Pettis and Hamilton and the running backs. Kozlowski and Plater, the wide receivers. Gordon Hudson is his tight end. That's your story, your score. Kozlowski goes to the left. Later to the right. Pitch back. We've got a new running back in there for BYU. That would be Bruce Hansen. He's forced out. Number 34, Bruce Hansen. Forced out by David Howard. Little toss sweep. We'll take a look what they're doing inside. It's just man blocking. You just try and hook your your initial man but David Howard just isn't going to let it happen. This is the transfer from Oregon State that we talked about at the top. He's a real gamer going to be a good football player might be as good a backer as they've had here. They lost the yard at second down and 11. McMahon puts it up and it's complete. Pretty good effort over there at the 28 yard line. 
by Scott Pettis got a hand on it and that's about all. So it'll be third down and 11 for BYU. They're deep in their own territory back on their own 11 yard line. Young Jim McMahon looking over the situation. Little in tackle twist that time and McMahon was able to scramble get it away. Pettis was open. But uh, Anderson came over and I believe he heard some footsteps that time as uh, Anderson put a little pressure on. So we wind up with a third and uh, long. 11.50 to play in the half. Brigham Young leading Long Beach State 14 to nothing. Anaheim, California. McMahon completes this time to Scott Colley, junior wide receiver from San Jose, brought down by David Howard, close to a first down. Kali uh, was supposed to be the wide receiver has been getting all that pressure from Kozlowski. He makes a fine delay this time. A little drag pattern. McMahon just puts it in there. It's like cake. Kali does a good job here. Gets hit by Howard, the man we've been talking about. They'll measure for the first downs, too. Gonna be close. They got it. So many arsenals in that uh, weapon uh, department for BYU. They can beat you so many ways throwing the football. Delays. Drag patterns, they'll go deep. McMahon is the architect, and that offensive line does a fine job of picking up stunts. He might have lost some receivers, but he's got some pretty good ones in there now. Kali comes out, Kozlowski comes out, Plater and the Balholm come back in. First and ten on the 22 for the Cougars, who lead it 14 to nothing. And it is Bruce Hansen. Picks up four yards, gets it out across the 25 yard line, hit there by Mike Otis. Bruce Hansen, one of two Hansen brothers on this BYU team. They're from American Fork, Utah. Bruce Hansen is a sophomore running back. His brother Brian is a junior linebacker. Stroth uh, was the lead blocker that time. Many times when you throw so much, it's, it's tough to drive block because you're used to pass blocking, but it was an excellent effort that time by Vince Stroth, the left tackle. Second down and six. Moving by Long Beach State, flag goes down, play continues. Pass is complete over on the far side. Pass is complete to Scott Pettis, but there's a penalty marker down. Trying to play wishbone with him on the far side, Erwin Anderson. I think the play will come back, but once again, a tribute to Jim McMahon as he read the, the defensive set that time and went to the uh, correct receiver out of the backfield, Pettis. Penalty is apparently going to be against Long Beach State. We saw some movement on the right side of their defensive line. Long consultation. Why wouldn't it take so long on that? Irv? Well, I really don't know. <laughs> I think Come on it, now. I think it'd be pretty you know specific. How I think, think it's a motion penalty here, and I think they'll have to bring it back. Let's see what Long Beach wants to do. Well, they're still deciding there. Uh, Aston Dave Cree on the side. Of we'll watch the man in the white hat, Roger McMahon. It's offsides. It was, uh, I beg your pardon. They uh, had the offsetting happy. penalties, and didn't they? Yeah. Lavelle Edwards just has done a heck of a job. One of 12 children. Was a defensive coach all the time. Okay. BYU has called for a timeout, spending the first of their three. We've got 10:41 to play in the first half. BYU leading Long Beach State by a score of 14 nothing. First and 10. Brigham Young. 36 yard line. McMahon's pass is complete. Excellent catch to David Mills, the tight end, sophomore out of Santa Utah, 24 yards, first down. I believe it's going to come back. I think they got Calvin Close for holding number 63, but yeah. you talk about your good release and the good pattern. Jim McMahon just waits. He throws late, letting things open up. Calvin Close is on the left side, and I think that's the guy they got. Here's McMahon waiting. It's a long pattern. Takes some time to develop. There's the quick release by McMahon. A great catch as he zeroes it in there to David Mills. It's all for naught. The holding penalty against the. Uh, and holding. We get back to the 31 yard line. The first down at 15. As young man brings him up. Young man born in Jersey City, raised in Utah, attended high school in San Jose for two years, 
Parents moved back to Utah. First down and 15. Attended Roy High School, Utah. There's another flag. There's six of them out there right now. Well, things have kind of fallen apart in our football game right now. That time, it appeared that the right guard man will straightened up a count early. Thing I like about McMahon, though, Stu, it doesn't matter if he gets a penalty, if there's a loss, he'll come back and pick up that first down yardage. Here's the call. It is against Manuel, the right guard. Lavelle Edwards says, this is our first game, fellas, but I still think it's got to stop. <laughs> That's right. You know, you're talking about McMahon a moment ago. BYU is one of the few colleges that recruited him mostly because of his credentials within the state of Utah. His first choice was Notre Dame. That was because he is of Catholic faith, but the Irish showed no interest. McMahon has had 400 or more games passing in seven games in 1980. Great attention. On a delayed draw. And this is Bruce Hansen. Gang tackle. David Howard leading the charge. Number five, the right inside linebacker got some pretty good blocking on that delayed draw by Hanson. Manuel gave a false step and then really destroyed the linebacker here as Hanson ran extremely well. Here it is on the right side. Look at the cross block right there. As number 63 is out leading. That's Calvin Close. Maybe as good a lineman as they have. Fine execution. Second down and 10. They were able to pick up the five yards. They just lost on the holding call. Pass was short, intended for Hanson in the flat near side. And so it was second and ten. It'll be third down and ten now. Stu, we were talking about this man's stats. If he plays at Notre Dame or USC or Alabama, he's got a lock on the Heisman, but you just don't get that much publicity in the Rocky Mountains. More people are aware, are aware of McMahon, though, this year because of the Holiday Bowl. The guy mm -hmm. has just done a fantastic job. Well, they, when they sent out the press guide, there were little uh, there's a story they were sent out a little story about his credentials here a little Heisman politics going on before the season ever began. Yeah, Quick release to Pettis out to the 41 or 42 yard line it'll be short of a first down. What a job by Anderson number 15 as they hit the hot receiver McMahon did a great job in that uh, little different look on defense but uh, Anderson came up and made the play after McMahon did his job. So Louis Littlemeyer will go back deep, the lone safety man for BYU uh, for uh, Long Beach State. As we take a good long look at Mike Meads, sophomore kicker for Cody, Wyoming. That's Littlemeyer. Away from Littlemeyer at the 12. Looking for some blocking. Nothing there. Back to about the 17 or 18 yard line. A 46 yard punt by Mees. A seven yard run back by Liedlmeyer. Long Beach State. Just about where second base is here in Anaheim Stadium in Southern California. We'll have it first and 10 on their own 19 yard line. Bart Oates was in on the tackle. It's been very difficult moving the football. They've had a little success with Gross on swings. Gask has been able to throw the ball uh, decently, but the running game has been nil. Buddy Heidman is the center. Aaron and Myers are the guards. Mejia and Bach are the tackles for Long Beach State. Yaskin, play action. He had it and dropped it. That's Daryl Stokes, the junior, split in, had the ball, and then dropped it. Ball was intended for 90. Jim Donnelly, the tight end, and it was just drilled through uh, him. Stokes, as you mentioned, Stu had the play. I kind of like this Stokes. He's got some leaping ability, plus a big target. Six foot five, and you like to throw to people that are that tall. He's out of San Diego. He's only a junior. So it's second down, ten for the 49ers, who trail 14 to nothing with eight and a half to go in the half. Gaska over the head of Stokes. Tried to go in the zone that time at the 25 yard line. He had another receiver, the tight end Jim Donnelly, was in the area. Dave Curry playing uh, Tom Lasorda here as he gives a sign. They've thrown the first two downs. Probably will throw it again. You know, we got a pretty good football game. Take away that cheap one on the interception mm -hmm. that Shell ran in. Despite all the statistics, statistics that McMahon is running up, it's still a 14 to nothing ball game. 
Curry has improved this ball club considerably in the four or five years he's been here, believe me. Gaskell with plenty of time to throw, and it is picked off. This one by number 15. That is Dave McKee, the left cornerback from Holden, Utah, and BYU has got the football on their own on the Long Beach State 34-yard line. Look at this. McKee, the 100-yard dash champ, does a great job because this ball is thrown pretty hard. It is a little off target, and McKee picks it up. This is the fellow who was a walk on. It just shows you if you got some determination and you want to play football, don't be afraid to get out and try. There's McKee, a walk on. Now he's scholarship. He's a pretty happy guy. He was shaken up early in the game, but he seems to be all right. Okay, BYU leading it by two touches. We'll now have the football on the 34 yard line. The man will go to work. Aerial attack resumes. McMahon throws. It's incomplete. Good coverage over there by Kevin Ray. The intended receiver was number 25, Glenn Kozlowski. But Kevin Ray had him well covered, the senior cornerback from West Covina. He was the alternate starter a year ago. I like his mental toughness. Kozlowski got into the uh, secondary easily that time with that reverse motion. A lot of ball clubs have gone to that after Tom Landry kind of introduced it to uh, uh, this country. And it is an easy way to get free. It, it makes it very difficult to hold up receivers on the line of scrimmage. Valholm and Collie replace Kozlowski and Plater as wide receivers now. McMahon says, I don't care who's out there. Just put somebody there that I can throw the ball to, which he's attempting to do now. It puts it up. This ball should have been caught by David Mills and wasn't. Mills was all by himself. The closest man to him was Joe Donahue. And it just popped right out of his hand. Well, Mills is upset. Here's McMahon scrambling around. He's had two drops. He's had three called back because of uh, penalties. Right on the numbers, and Mills just didn't squeeze it. You know, that doesn't happen very often. Let me point out something, though, Stu. Even though we've seen a couple of drops, they've made some great catches for McMahon, too. So it kind of evens up. It's going to be third down and 10. BYU on the Long Beach State 34-yard line. Brigham Young out in front, 14 to nothing, with eight minutes to play in the first half. McMahon running for his life is brought with a great tackle. Super tackle by Ken Bielman. Gave good pursuit. The senior left inside linebacker from Long Beach stayed right with McMahon and showed pretty good speed that time. And a loss on the play back to the 37. So he actually lost about three. He ran along the yardage, but laterally. It was a great play by Bielman. Donahue lost contained, but Bielman covered up for him. McMahon comes over. He's a little uh, fiery, too. He'll tell you what he thinks. There he is, the young man, McMahon. Very scholarly looking when he's not playing football. Wears glasses. McMees, that's Mike Mees right there to do the kicking. Liedlmeyer is deep. Liedlmeyer, number 28, indicating, pointing to his right to have somebody over there. This one's going to go deep into the end zone, no question. In fact, it's going to go beyond the end zone, almost into the seats. So it'll be a touchback, a 37-yard punt with no return. It'll be brought back out to the 20-yard line, first and 10 for Long Beach State, trailing 14 to nothing. 49ers have had only three first downs. BYU's had 10 as Mees looks on from the sidelines. And the dirt part of the infield that you saw a moment ago, this is the same stadium that's used by the California Angels of the American League. They're on the road right now. Tomorrow, the Rams will play their NFL regular season opener against Houston. Still my first field. time here. It's beautiful. It, uh, well, they it doesn't closed look like in. there's a bad seat. We get a, an opportunity. We'll show you the far side where we're sitting. That's all closed in in the last year or so to turn it into a football stadium. A dive by Gross. A hand up there by Brad and I. Might have deflected that pass for Gross. That's Anai right there, number 93. He's a senior from Hawaii. Pretty now, active guy there. There's the stands we're talking this, about. The, were you, that's, ah, that's where we're sitting. That's the football. That's the side that we're seeing right now that we're sitting from. That white box is the new press box they built here. Normally be along the third base side. We're shooting it now from left field. We're moving from center field. Now on your left, that is the new enclosed area. We'll come back to that action in a moment. Pass is incomplete. The area that you just saw on the left was just enclosed here. It took about a year to do so. That was all open. You could see a big freeway, the Orange Coast Freeway on the far side, right there that we're looking at right now. That is a new enclosed area. 
That would be in baseball if you can picture it in right and right center field going out towards center field. Those seats down at the bottom move in and out for football. Seat 69,000 for football. Used to seat 46,000 for baseball. There's the story on Angelo Gasca, 5 out of 15, 33%, 46 yards. Gasca. He completes his time to Jim Donnelly, makes the catch, doesn't get the first down, gets it out to about the 25 yard line. It'll be a fourth down situation. Long Beach State's going to have to kick it up. Kerry Whittingham, back up to Kyle Whittingham, made the stop. Think that in a proud papa, Fred. Mm -hmm. His number one son starts, number two son, just a young freshman waiting to take over. That's a nice position to be in. Get to work with him and go home for dinner. Sikahima deep around the end of the punting for Long Beach State. He's had a 47 48 yard. They let this one roll. I think there was a mix up there. That ball's going to take a Long Beach State bounce and go inside the 15. Sikahima started to come this way. Somebody else was back there. I believe. Well, I don't want to put the finger on him, but it looked like 22. Mike Jensen was back there, and one guy thought the other guy was going to take it. It winds up to be a 62-yard punt as a roll between them. As Dave Curry, Long Beach State's fine young coach, he's only 37, now in his fifth year as the head coach here. First and ten, BYU. They lead it 14 to nothing. There's six minutes to play in the first half. One of those intercepted pass returned 11 yards for a touch. Man, it's all day to throw him. Later. Later, hit immediately by Joe Donahue, left outside linebacker, and Eric Johnson. You point out how much time he does have up front. It's Rogers, Manuel, Oates, Close, and Stroth, and they just do the job. McMahon is over 200 yards, and we've still got five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first half. That's only a half. <laughs> 209. He gets 400 and three quarters. 47 touchdowns last year. That's like a lifetime for people. Yes, sir. Four, two, four. Four, two, four. Pettis. Wayman Hamilton, the running back, set behind McMahon, but he has no idea to throw it to him. He goes to Scott Alley on a quick look in pattern. Howard hit him first. Ray finished him off. We've got an injury, too, Stu. Looks like Kali uh, got nicked up a little bit, might have hyperextended that knee, or just got the wind knocked out of him, one of the two. They got the first down, though. They spot the ball just across the 30 yard line. It'll be a first and 10 for BYU. Five minutes to play in the half. Lincoln Young now with 11 first down. Three for the 49ers of Long Beach State. McMahon bumps into Pettis and he's immediately dropped. As he started to drop back, he banged into his own running back. Pettis, he was dropped. He was hit by Michael Otis. Looked like he changed up at the line of scrimmage. 49ers are really coming. They've got an all-out stun on. And here's the, uh, the mix-up right here and the loss. Lost five. BYU, uh, Stu, staying basically with split backs. They've gone to the eye occasionally, but they like those split backs so they get five receivers into the pattern quick. Second down, 15 to go. Balholm wide to the left. Collie to the right. In motion, Pettis. McMahon goes left. McMahon throws and completes to Pettis. And again, it is Michael Otis that comes over to rank him up. That's tough to cover. Pro, pro slot to the right. They use motion and throw out in the left flat. Almost impossible to cover as McMahon is able to scramble so so easily. Pettis yes. scored four times last year. Little guy, Stu, 5'9", about 175 pounds. Very competitive. Pettis is out of Stockton, California. Third down, about a yard and a half. That is coming this way. He's got the first down and then some. Out to the 45 yard line. On the bottom of the pile, Kevin Ray. Pretty good looking Green Bay sweep. Pull the guards and get out after it. And Pettis is quick enough to turn the corner and give him the first down with 4.05 remaining in the half. Pettis went to Staff High School down up in Stockton, about 300 miles north of where we are right now. 
281 yards last year. Carrying the football for BYU. Penalty flag is down. Catch is complete to Balholm in the middle of a lot of traffic at about the 43 yard line, but that's a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. Dan Worthing, John Carr, the strong side safety, number 46, got the hit. You saw Balholm kick the ground. He knows what he did. He started one count early, and there's the call on Neil Balholm. Watch we'll it. take a look. Here he is. Here's the false step. By Balholm, he knows he made the uh, mistake. Wide receiver, 6'2", 180, a junior from Vancouver. Boy, he is a good-looking receiver. Unfortunately, he comes back with uh, nice, soft hands. Good talent there. Five-yard penalty will bring the ball back to the 40-yard line. It'll be first down and 15. First and 15 on the Cougar 40. Three forty to go in the first half. The clock is running. It is fourteen to nothing. Brigham Young. A Forty-nine yard drive culminated with a ten-yard run by Pettis, and then the interception by Shell. The run back of eleven yards for the touch. McMahon. Oh, was that a super catch? Tell me about it. Oh. <laughs> but there's a twenty-five yards. To Dan Plater with uh, Gordon Hudson making the hit. Right in the middle of this zone as they somehow find a seam. McMahon just floats it up there and they go out and get it. Number 95 did his job. That's Gordon Hudson. I've called him Plater. It's Gordon Hudson, a sophomore tight end from Salt Lake City. I really like him. I think he's got a chance to be a superstar. They also tack something on here. We'll watch the uh, official here, Roger McMahon, face, face mask. mask. Saw penalty marker down where the ball was back at the 30, so they'll move it down to the 21. And Mr. McMahon continues to pile up yardage in the air, 254 yards now. He's completed 15 out of 23. He's been picked off twice. When you throw the ball that many times, you're going to get picked off, believe me. From the dirt, as he's hit, as he throws, and it's incomplete. Coming in with good penetration was David Howard. He had a hole of McMahon as he was trying to throw. Howard, the right inside linebacker. And McMahon really couldn't set up. Lavelle Edwards normally counters that with the uh, short quick trap or the draw when he gets a backer stunt or else they put on an in tackle twist. You can see the infield part now. We were talking about a little while ago baseball infield. Ball just about where second base would be if the Angels were playing a baseball game here. Second down 10. McMahon's throw. Balholm at the 16. And it was David Howard who got the hit. The clock shows 256 remaining in the first half. Some concern over in Provo, Utah about Doug Scoble, the offensive coordinator, moving on to San Diego State. That'll be a heck of a ball game when those two get together. But from what we've seen in the first half, uh, they have recovered nicely. Doug has got himself a head coaching job, so it's worked out well for everybody. Scoble at one time was head coach at the uh, University of Pacific. Up in Stockton. <laughs> on the dirt part, Red Rush. McMahon retreating, puts it in the end zone, a big scramble, it's tipped away. Scott Colley had a hand on it. Nobody really had possession. There were two men deep. Erwin Anderson was there, John Carr was there. They had double coverage, but they had two receivers in the end zone. Colley along with Balholm. Yeah, it really made it possible for the 49ers and bringing up an apparent field goal attempt was Michael Donovan. The down lineman put tremendous pressure on McMahon, made him run out of the uh, pocket, and it really paid off that time. Donovan, the 6 3 2 40, a junior from San Juan Capistrano, Capistrano California. 33 yard field goal attempt. Homo to hold, Gunther to try. From the dirt. It's wobbly, but it's good. So Gunther adds three more points on the board. 
and he's gotten five for the course of the day and the score now with 243 to play in the half BYU 17 Long Beach State nothing. Bryce Wilson is deep. He's back there with Bill Irvin. 59 yard drive 11 plays culminating with the field goal 33 yards by Gunther and it's 17 nothing BYU. Gunther kicking off. Kick is short. Somewhere around the 17 or 18 yard line. And immediately brought down is John Carr by John Mannion. So Long Beach State will have the ball on the dirt at the 25. 238 to go in the half only three first downs that's been how ferocious this BYU defense has been out there today. Well they've always been able to play people talk about the offense as we've said before but that defense is really special. Land and Bryce Wilson. And they're now gross is not in the backfield. That is Bryce Wilson a sophomore from Indio. Mark Brady really contained the play, turned it in, did his job. Very short gain. Brady Brothers can play in that secondary. Yeah, they can. Pick up of a yard, second down, nine. Gross is in there now. Land goes out. Gaska, that's his story. Six out of 16 for 50. He's been picked off three times. One of them returned for a touchdown. Angelo fakes rolls to his right going to carry it himself pushed out by Mark Brady did not get to the first down marker had to get to about the 35 got to the 32 and Dave Curry continues to send in word from the bench on what his next play should be said three pretty good quarterbacks in Long Beach State Jim Freitas Paul McGaffigan and Kevin Starkey. He worked with Plunkett at Stanford. Yeah, he's very capable. Seven years he was an assistant at Stanford. Third down, three. Gross. First down, Long Beach State. Putting a hand up there was Chuck Ian. Knock him down as he went by. That's the fourth first down for Long Beach State, and it comes with a minute and 45 to go in the first half. Mainly the work of Gross. He's been pretty much their offensive thrust in the first half as it's been tough running. They had one drive late in the first quarter when they were going the other way. They got it down to about the 25 or 30 and there was an interception. Gaska on first down puts it long. Side to side and passes incomplete near the 20 yard line. The pass was intended for. Number 26 that would be Bill Irvin a wide receiver going along the sidelines step for step with David McKee. Pretty good action there. Irvin runs four or five. McKee stayed with him pretty well. I thought it was a decently thrown pass just uh, three people doing their job that time. Second down and ten. Stokes is in there now for Irvin. Little Meyer is on the left side. This is to the tight end Jim Donnelly. He is in the grasp and immediately dropped down there by Todd Shell, the sophomore weak side linebacker, who returned an interception for a touchdown earlier in this first half. The clock is running and showing one minute to play in, and now we've got a timeout called by Long Beach State. They spend the first of their time, uh, three timeouts as Angelo Gasca comes over to talk to Dave Curry to confer. With a minute and six seconds remaining in the half, Long Beach will have the ball third and five on their own 43. They're down by 17 points. And so high level conference going over there on the far side lines to kind of indicate what should be the procedures. We go down out the last few moments of this first half. Well obviously the strategy is to try and get it down close and give Guy Johnson a chance to get this ball club on the board. It's been such tough sledding. Dave Curry lost 17 starters 11 of them signed pro football contracts so you know they had good talent last year. I still feel they'll be very competitive in the PC 2A. So far, it's just been a problem. They've been outhorsed here. There were five candidates for the quarterbacking job as we look from behind Lavelle Edwards. Five candidates for the quarterbacking job in Long Beach's spring practice. A couple got hurt. One thing led to another. 
Gasker was chosen over Doug Disney. He was a passing star down near San Diego. And uh, some folks say, well, Gasker won it by default, but Curry will say, no, he earned it because of maturity and leadership. The fake to Gross. Gasket faking one, pumping twice. Now throws a screen to Gross. And Gross is shoved out of bounds by Kyle Whittingham. But he got himself a first down. Good block on the screen by two people we want to give credit to. 75 Buddy Hinman and 72 Don Seaman. Because BYU had the play well covered. And those two young men just got the job done. On the other side of the 50, now trying to pick up a. At least three. Get something on the board. That's the second time Long Beach State has been in BYU territory. Gross. Reverse. Ball is fumbled. Picked up by BYU. And coming up with the ball is Brad Anai after it was fumbled on the reverse by James Davis, a wide receiver. Brad Anai gets the reverse. Recovery of the fumble. Look at it again. This is how you're supposed to play defense. You have to have somebody follow every time. And Anai does his job to the team, knocks it out of his hand. Anai's father started uh, for the uh, BYU Cougars when he played ball. He's from uh, Hawaii, started as a freshman himself over there. You know, he intercepted a pass against C CSU a year ago and scored a touchdown. So the guy's used to making things happen. First down, Brigham Young on the Long Beach State 40 yard line. BYU trying to add to the 17 nothing lead. McMahon goes to the air lane to right away. He throws. It's complete to his favorite, one of his favorite receivers, the freshman, Gen Kozlowski, who's hit by Kevin Ray. That There's right Lanai. there is Lenanai. Boy, he's a big one. A good one, too. <laughs> he's happy. Could be an All American. Got a lot of potential, that young man. 40 seconds to go and running. First down on that last play. McMahon throwing a pass. It's complete to Plater. He runs out of bounds to stop the clock. This BYU is why you has two left. Stu, this is where McMahon just eats people alive, changing things at the line of scrimmage, using the clock in the last two minutes of a football game. Nothing can compare with that comeback in the Holiday Bowl when he threw that wing of prayers we mentioned before to Clay Brown. He's just a winner. Well, this young man, 32 NCA records, 4,571 yards, Ooh, 47 touchdown passes last year. Of course, he knows what he's doing. He's looking. He's going to go out of bounds and stop that clock again. This time he gets the ball down to about the uh, 21 yard line. That was Mike Otis with pursuit. They stopped the clock with 26 seconds left. One of the interesting things about his stats last year, the 47 touchdowns, the 4,500 yards through the air, he sat out the equivalent of two games because BYU wrapped up ball games so early. What would the guy have done if he would have played uh, all 12 football games? He's something. He was a punter when he was a freshman in 77. Backing up Mark Wilson. A diving try by Glenn Kozlowski at the goal line. Kevin Ray with him. Stu, you mentioned uh, that McMahon punted. McMahon. Uh, Kicked one left footed against Hawaii when he had to scramble. He just made one up, kicked the ball 33 yards. He's something special, uh, whatever he seems to do. Field goal kicking team comes out on the field. Kurt Gunter, home motor hold. There are 20 seconds left. Try to pick up three points after the recovered fumble by and I. Ball we've set down on the 28 yard line, so it'll be a 38 yard kick. He's already had a 33 yard kick. No, it is low and to the right. So Long Beach State will get the ball back with just 15 seconds left. And I'd be interested in knowing what Dave Curry has to say to his young men at halftime. No offense at all. One drive in the first quarter, and that's about it. Now you heard about the high powered offense of BYU, but the defense has been just as effective this afternoon. Been very effective. 
you talk to people around Provo and they felt that the defense would have to carry him early until the wide receivers got some experience. That hasn't been the case today. The wide receivers have been spectacular and the defense of course has been excellent. So young Mr. Gascon to fire here. He's down by 17 points. Gross maintaining his balance beautifully gets a couple extra yards. Finally it is Brady who hits him Mark Brady. That should be the last play of the first half. The clock showing seven seconds. It's a first down. That's the sixth for Long Beach State. But Long Beach State calls time with seven seconds left. They spend their second of three timeouts. And that's young Jim McMahon on the sidelines. He has been the whole story of this first half. Cool, calm, senior, and look at the story. 18 out of 29, and that's for 276 yards, and that's only for two quarters of football. That's Some guys don't get that in the whole game. Well, you know, a lot of people uh, talk about Neil Lomax last year when Portland was running up all kinds of scores, and he was getting tremendous yardage, and here's another indication of what a guy can do that throws a football a bunch. Lavelle Edwards just turns McMahon loose. And they've had some drops, they've had some penalties, and he still has 276 yards, and we are, we're not even to the half, uh, halftime intermission yet. You suppose somebody knew something. As I mentioned, he was a punter and as a freshman. He was supposed to be the backup in 78 when Mark Wilson got hurt. He got into eight games. He threw for 1,300 yards in those eight games. That's the young man we're talking about right there. He took the Cougars to a Holiday Bowl. They lost the Navy. He got, but Wilson got back in 79. McMahon had off-season knee surgery, was redshirted. Boy, did he make himself known last year. Man, I'll tell you, Doug Land, roll the backfield now. That's gross. That should be the last play of the first half. He gets that ball out to about the 37 38, and that is, as we look at young Jim McMahon running off the field, that is the end of the first half with the score Brigham Young University 17. Long Beach State, nothing. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. Seventeen to nothing is the score as Brigham Young takes that lead into the second half over Long Beach State, along with Herb Brown, I'm Stu Nahan, and we're from Anaheim Stadium, Anaheim, California, about 40 miles down the freeway from the city of Los Angeles. That's your score. And our second half is just about to begin. It's been a kind of a expected first half with McMahon throwing for over 200 yards passing, but we're looking for the that's McMahon right there we're talking about, but we're kind of expecting Long Beach State's offense to get a little generated a little bit more in the second half. Yeah, McMahon, the story on him has had things pretty much his own way, and the defense has just shut out Long Beach, so uh, Dave uh, Curry hopefully will get them going. Let's mention a couple of guys, Stu, a couple of good friends of ours, Glenn Tuckett and uh, Perry Moore. The athletic directors at the two schools. You saw Glenn last night. He was trading baseball. Glenn stories. Tuckett, the athletic director for BYU, was out of Dodger Stadium last night, going it over with Lasorda. Lasorda used to manage Ogden mm -hmm. in that baseball league out there, and he and Glenn Tuckett knew each other. Okay, number two for BYU, about to kick off, is Kurt Gunther. Little Meyer is deep, along with Bryce Weiss, Bryce Wilson, and Bill Irvin. So our second half is just about ready. Gunther boots it in the air and we're into play for the second half. It is Bryce Wilson about two yards deep declined to run it back out. Bill Irvin standing alongside indicates go to one knee so it'll be brought back out to the 20 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 Long Beach State as they operate. Angelo Gasca was the quarterback in the first half. The young man who won the role. He's the young man from Santa Monica Junior College went to high school in nearby Venice California. He continues as the quarterback. We thought we might see Doug Disney a little bit later on. Nine out of 20, 59 yards, and he's been picked off three times. And they've lost the ball, 49ers have, by a fumble. So it's actually been four turnovers. Gross stumbled as he tried to come forward on the dirt part of the infield, the skin part. He lost his footing. He was finally hit by Mike O'Neill. Couldn't get any traction going in the beginning, able to pick up three. Up front for Long Beach State. In addition to having Doug Land and Tim Gross, they have Little Meyer and Stokes as the wide receivers. Mejia, Myers, Hindman, Heron, Bach at to the front line. The tight end is Jim Donnelly. It's second and seven. It's Ramage, Morgan, Bellyanga, and Ane. Alvin Rowe is in there now in the backfield as Gaska looks, throws across his body, almost picked off. Oh, that is dangerous. 
looking for Davis almost picked off by Steve Brady number 13 came across there among several defenders number 26 coming back for Long Beach State is Bill Irvin that is a very dangerous pass the Brady boys have been very impressive in that secondary they move around pretty good and of course the key to that 4-3 is if your safeties do a job try and hold up the tight end and the safety picks them up and free safety wanders around and the Brady boys have done it today they are brothers both are seniors they are twins their hometown is Oak Ridge, Tennessee gross waiting for him as he tried to go to the right side Mike O'Neill weak side linebacker out of Hacienda Heights California so Long Beach unable to generate anything in their first series second half they now send Mike Horan out, the senior from Fullerton, California, to punt away. And it is by Sakahima, way back deep. Sakahima at the 35. Back up to about the 42-yard line. A 41-yard punt, a 6-yard return. And Long Beach State trailing. Sends their defensive unit out on the field. They're trailing 17 nothing as BYU, and we look at Sikahima coming off the field. Okay, it is first and ten. BYU has Stroth, Close, Oates, Manuel, and Rogers up front. Backfield: Pettis and Hamilton. Wide receivers: Kozlowski and Clayton. McMahon makes no effort to disguise what he's doing. Throws this time to Pettis. Able to pick up four yards. Gets it out to the 45 before David Howard comes in. David Howard, the right side, inside linebacker from Long Beach. Staying with those split backs so they can get five receivers into the pattern. That was a simple delay. So many patterns Lavelle Edwards has in that can hurt you. And McMahon just has total command of his offense. Knows what to do, sees the entire field. Second down, five and a half. Over center, Bart Oates for BYU. Pettis. Kevin Ray. Kevin Ray got a hand up and slowed him down as he tried to go over to John Carr. Came over to finish him up. Got the ball across midfield to about the 49. They may have a first down. They're going to do some measuring. Joe Donahue did a good job of stringing the play out that time for uh, Long Beach. And Donahue is 6'2", 222, a sophomore from Santa Ana, California. A lot of good football players in California, Stu. I think that this rebuilding will take a while for uh, Dave Curry, but it's going to pay off. They're a little out horse today. They'll get it done. I'm very impressed with the caliber of player they have. Lavelle Edwards on the far side. What a super coaching job he's done in his previous nine years as the head man there. He is a bishop, he's a husband, a father, a grandfather, an author, a teacher, and a doctor. Well, Edwards, done it all. Got a pretty talented wife, too. Patty writes a column for the local newspaper in Provo, so it's a real family affair. One of 12 children, I bet he eats fast. He had to eat fast when he had 12 kids. Don't get, don't get into a game of golf with him, either. He's one of the better golfers among the nation's football coaches right now. That's right. Okay, BYU. That's their all time record career wise against Long Beach State. They're 4 0. They've never lost a game to LB State. Long Beach State 8 3 last year. Won their last seven in a row. Won the PCAA. First time they've ever won it. Third down and inches. McMahon takes it himself, gets the first down. He's down close to the 45 yard line. Daryl Harris in to make the hit. Pretty sharp play by McMahon. They had a stunt onto the right, so he sneaks the opposite way, going to his right. McMahon just changes up at the line of scrimmage as well as anybody, as we've mentioned. Six years old, this young man accidentally stuck a fork in his right eye. Doctor said he might never see out of that eye again. Vision is about 20 to 60. He had a knee operation two years ago, and bothered by a shoulder injury. And he's still doing all kinds of things as he puts that football in the air. Penalty marker is down. So is McMahon as he gets down around the 40-yard line. 
in the hands of Daryl Harris, the junior tackle from West Covina. But there's a penalty marker. It's going to be against BYU. Look like 74. Steve Rogers is the guy that they got that time. Long Beach lost their lanes when they rushed the passer. McMahon took advantage, but the holding penalty is going to negate the scramble. Three interceptions, one fumble have cost Long Beach State any kind of a. A scoring drive at all. They had one such going in the first quarter, but it bogged down on an interception, and they haven't been able to. They've been on the uh, BYU side of the 50-yard line only twice this ball game. Last time they got there, they were there for one play, and then it was picked off on a reverse. A lot of penalties in this ball game too. That's the tenth penalty so far, and you expect a lot of uh, mistakes the first ball game, and that has been the case. I did a pro game a couple weeks ago, Rams against Minnesota. We go Thursday night in the same field. 36 penalties were called in that ball game. That's a bunch. Somebody should zipper up those pockets. 12 times they called encroachment. McMahon, quick one over the middle. This is complete. Pretty good play. The running back, fullback, Wayman Hamilton, sophomore from Calipatria, brought down by Dan Worthington, but it's a first down. They take the ball down to the 43 yard line. Of Long Beach State. Well, he caught Michael Otis, the right side linebacker, on a stunt. Man picks up the hot receiver. Nice looking play. Plater and Balholm, the wide receivers. Balholm to the left now. Look for the twist Pettis. right here, Stu. Yeah. Back off the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they twist. They do. McMahon puts it up in the air long and hook. Reaching in, super catch, Dan Plater. He reached behind Kevin Ray. Ray was looking at him. He was looking for the ball, and Plater just reached out. It's a 25-yard play. I thought these receivers were inexperienced. Is that what you said? <laughs> That's what the book is. Plater does have some experience. There was a twist we called, and here's the catch by Plater. That's the fourth spectacular catch by BYU receivers today, and uh, McMahon has got to uh, like what he sees so far. It's supposed to be a little tough in the early going. We haven't seen that today. 55 yards for Plater. Plater, excellent jump and hurdles. Track went to Reno High School in Nevada. This is Pettis being chased and missed. And finally, gang tackle. First man to get to him was David Howard. Scott Pettis might have lost a half yard. Fieldman really forced that play by making Pettis take a different route than he wanted to go. So the Cougars will put it up in this situation. That's no secret. McMahon likes to throw very little play action, Stu. It'll be second down and about 10. 18 first downs to six. Cougars over the 49ers. McMahon. Looks, 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 and throws. This is complete to Plater. He is in the arms of John Carr, amongst others. To about the 12. Plater's fourth catch, a little reverse motion. He'll line up at the flanker. That means he's a yard off the line of scrimmage. He's eligible to go in motion. Beg your pardon, he did not go in motion. His, uh, his fellow compadre there, here's the catch by Plater. That's his fourth reception. That brings up a third and very short yardage for the first. Third down, about three. McMahon, over 300 yards passing now. He's only had 11 incompletions and 33 tosses. This is to Kozlowski. First and goal to go at about the two yard line and a swirl of dust in the hands of Kevin Gray. Kevin Ray grabbed him. That should be a difficult pass for McMahon because he's only six foot that quick looking, but he throws it so well. An interesting comparison going on out here between Elway and McMahon. Mm -hmm. Jack Elway, a guy who looks like a Greek god with Stanford. Dave Curry, <laughs> how do you stop him? <laughs> I don't have any answers, Dave. I've been sitting up here. I haven't figured anything out. It's tough. First and goal to go on the two yard line. BYU leading 17 nothing, trying to add to it. Traction. There is none. But it's a touchdown anyway as Wayman Hamilton takes it in there. They really gave it away that they were going to run right with Pettis sneaking up to uh, get a little wham block. And Hamilton showed a little agility, and this guy's going to help him as he got outside. you got to take the heat off. 
So with some running, and he does. That's right. Wayman Hamilton keeping everybody honest. Hamilton, a young man from Raleigh, that's down in the desert near Indio, down near uh, Calexico, and Mr. Bra Mr. Heyman, Wayman Ray Hamilton takes it all in there. Gunther on the point try. All CIF in football. Gunther will try the extra point. Tom Homo will hold for him. It's now 23 zip. It is now 24 zip. And so BYU has its third touchdown to go along with the field goal. Let's take a look at it one more time. Pettis up close to Wham Block. Hamilton sees there's nothing inside, puts a little juke on, manages to uh, keep his balance on the infield, and he dives for that goal line. You like to see a guy that uh, knows where that final stripe is. Okay, we've got eight minutes and 43 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. Brigham Young sitting on top of a 24 0 lead. That is Wayman Hamilton right there out of Brawley, California. Young man who just scored that touchdown two yards out, right side. He wants to work with the mentally retarded when he graduates. Uh, also was an excellent basketball player in high school. He played in the McDonald's All-Star game. So you're not only talking about a good football player, you're talking about a good athlete. Ten plays, 59 yards, didn't take very long. Five minutes. Okay. Eight minutes, 43 seconds to go in the game, along with Irv Brown. I'm Stu Nahan, and we're coming yet your way from Anaheim, California. Anaheim Stadium in Orange County. Home of the Long Beach State 49ers, who right now trail BYU 24 zip. Gunther kicking off. Wilson is deep. He's got it on the two, declines to run it out. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line and set it from there. Well, that's automatic. That Gunther just puts it in the end zone every time, and your ball club starts at the 20. You got to march 80 against a very tough defense. Doesn't happen often. So so far, Angelo Gasca has gone all the way. The senior from Santa Monica at quarterback for Long Beach State. We thought we're not doing any second guessing that we might see Doug Disney, but not so far. Ten penalties have been ruled out or run off. There's been a couple have been declined. We've had about a dozen penalties so far in the game. Gaskin continues his quarterback. This time, the ball carrier is Doug Land, the senior from Linwood. Gets a couple of yards out to about the 24 yard line, hit there by David Apu. David Apu, A U P I U. He's from Carson, which is close to us here. Looked like they had something going as Rory Myers at that time was involved in a trap with Delania, but the play closed quickly as the BYU pursuit has been very impressive today. Second down and six. Little Meyer is off to the right side. Stokes is to the left. But they're going to stay on the ground. It is land again. Gets across the 25. About the 26. Got two more. It'll be third down and four. Again, in on the hit. Was a chuck in. Shows you the depth that they have within play that defense. They have Philania up front. That's a lot of people. They're big, they're strong, and they really play that 4 3 well. Most teams in college football play an odd front, so when you go against an even, it's very difficult for those guards. Rowe is in the backfield now. They fake to Rowe. Gaska hangs on. Gaska throws as he's hit. It's almost picked off. Whittingham almost picked it off. It was intended for Jim Donnelly, and Whittingham got a finger on it. Almost had their fourth interception. Pretty good shot right here is Donnelly. Uh, tail end of this play action. You get another look. You want to play football, you got to be able to take a little punishment. There's a hit right there. This Gasket takes a pretty good hit. By Sikahima is deep. Or on the kick. Sikahima dropping back to about his 23. Wallace to the right. Got it back out to about the 35. A 51 yard punt, an eight yard return. Long Beach State trailing 24 0. Sends his defensive unit out. Daryl Patillo made the hit. And let's show you the offensive total, the total offense here in this ball game. Look at the stats. McMahon has 335 yards total offense. And the whole Long Beach State team has 106. So here comes the Air Force once again. He comes out throwing. He stands his ground. He throws long and overthrew Plater. Plater. 
Cover down there by James Galloway at the back. Junior for Long Beach who's in there for Irwin Anderson now at the right side. Also drew some double coverage as the free safety Worthing the number 23 kicked over and McMahon showing that poise wisely threw it out of bounds rather than uh, let the safety pick one up. Anderson uh, has limped off the field. I felt uh, in the first half Irwin was the best player in the secondary for the 49ers so we'll watch his progress and see if he comes back right now he's sitting on the bench. All right he's got Val home to the left and he's got Polly to the right. Let's see who he goes to. Look at McMahon. He stands he looks he. What the heck I'll throw it anyway. He gets it off the pass is complete to Plater. He actually had three receivers in there. That was actually Gordon Hudson number 95 who caught that ball across midfield and hit by James Galloway. But it's good enough for a first down. They put the ball in the 45 yard line. So he's really flooding that secondary. If you had uh, they jokingly talked to Curry before the game. He said I'm going to put nine men in the defensive secondary against McMahon. I'm going to use six linebackers and I'm going to rush five. And you better wet the field down too. That's right. That's that's 22 guys you know. Offside Long Beach play continues. McMahon running for his life. He goes out of bounds somewhere around the 38 yard line. Picked up about seven. But there was a penalty marker all over the place. Everybody was jumping off. I saw Tom Woods, a junior tackle from Paramount number 99, jump off first. There's the sign. What they're doing, Stu, every time Long Beach puts the tackle back off the line of scrimmage a yard and a half. They're coming with a twist and I'm sure after Dave Curry looks at his films it's very easy to get some tendencies and very easy to scout. They'll adjust and change that up because consistently they've done that and they've been offside trying to anticipate the snap count uh, twice in the same set. Now he got about six running. They'll get five for the penalty and they'll get the down over. So obviously they're going to take the penalty. McMahon was impressive running to his left that time as he gave a little uh, arm pump. Got a defender to commit himself and then picked up the yardage, but they will, as you point out, take the penalty so they have an extra down. Ball is spotted at the Long Beach State 40 yard line. We're down to six and a half to play third quarter. It's 24 0 BYU. They let it to half 17 zip, and they're driving again. Edison, the slot is in motion. That is Pettis. Ray finally gets to him. Ray got to him. First man to hit make contact was Joey Dosina, number 44, who's in as a left inside linebacker. First time we've seen him. He's a junior from Chula Vista. High school coach is looking in. If you want to play that's a surefire success, you get in that pro slot right, and then you put Pettis in motion and throw in the flat. There's a look at the first downs. BYU well out in front. 20 to 6. That was their 20. They're leading 24 to nothing and threatening to put some more on the board now. This aerial machine led by the general, Jim McMahon. Plater shoved out by Ray. That'll put them down to about the 22. That will pick up about five or six. Ballholm is in there now. A lot of fans for BYU in this area. There are a lot of Brigham Young supporters in the Southern California area. About five yards to go. It's second down and five. Clock shows 5:50 to play in the third quarter. McMahon under fire lets it go anyway, and it's almost picked off. Good defensive play there by Dan Worthington. Senior free safety from Yorba Linda came across there just as Plater was to take it in the end zone. From nowhere came Worthington to make a fine defensive play. I've been impressed with Worthington all day long. The guy just gets things done. He seems to be in the right place at the right time. Very intelligent. Shows some leadership and he's a worker. They got to like what they see. You know, he runs at 109 8. And uh, talking to Dave Curry before the ball game, he says he exemplifies our ball club. He's quiet but aggressive. Dan Worthington. 23. Kozlowski comes in with a play on a third and five. Plater's to the left, Kozlowski's to the right. McMahon looks to the right. McMahon throws down the middle. It's Kozlowski put it on and dropped the ball. 
He got between the twin secondary men. He got between Kevin Ray and Erwin Anderson. And Kozlowski juggled the ball, and that cost him six. Well, he's made some fine catches today, too. He's upset with himself, but what a read by McMahon to get the coverage to the other side and then split that seam. Here's a reaction by Kozlowski. He's liable to hit himself right here. <laughs> Wait a minute, watch this. Oh, oh, that hurts. Oh, Kaj, you got four years of football. Forget that. That happens. Forget about it. That's right. They're going to go for it. Fourth down and five. They're leading 24 to nothing. McMahon's pass is complete at the five yard line. This one was the Ballholm. Neil Ballholm, the junior from the state of Washington. Erwin Anderson made it. That's great depth with Ballholm, Plater, and Kozlowski. There was some thought that uh, Lavelle Edwards would not shuttle his receivers this year because of the inexperience. He'd go a lot with just the one guy, Plater. That's not true. He's got three that have showed us everything today. Hmm. So it's going to be first and goal to go on the five. Last time we saw this situation, the ball on that hash mark, Hamlin went to the right side. Man throws is on one bounce. Great effort by Long Beach that time. James Galloway, the defensive back, buried Plater. That's the guy that McMahon wanted to go to. Ball was intended for David Aina, a tight end, number 98. Look at McMahon. You want to see what he's done? 400 yards again. 40. One attempts, 27 completions, closing in on the 400 yard mark. 32 NCAA records this young man holds. McMahon was looking for Plater. He was covered, had to eat it, and for the first time today, he's been sacked. It was Mike Otis. Michael Donovan was in there. Ed Beeler was in there. Right side linebacker Otis is coming hard. Nobody picks him up. Here Pettis tries, but he just gets overpowered on the inside, has to pick up two men, and he's only 5'9", 170. And you're just uh, outmanned and overmatched there, two on one. It's very difficult. There's the man who made the play. Number 79 for Long Beach, Mike Otis. Lost five. It is now third down and goal on the 10. For Kozlowski, coverage by Ray, incomplete, too far. He's a very intelligent But pattern. there's a penalty marker down. Yes, thrown uh, in the backfield, so we would guess it's holding. Very intelligent play. The play doesn't work, but a nice little scissors pattern using that reverse motion. It is holding BYU. This will make it fourth down and goal unless Long Beach State declines a penalty. BYU really uses the lockout procedure with their interior linemen, and it just depends how the official sees it. As far as a lockout, you just extend your hands. The pros have really gone to it a great deal. I know BYU really locks out, and it just depends on interpretation. I wonder about the theory for the declining of that penalty just now, Irv. Are they, uh, they don't want to give McMahon a chance to throw again, and they're going to settle for a field goal? It's fourth down and goal. The ball is on the 10 yard line. <laughs> No field goal attempt right here. No, they're going Lavelle to goes for broke. On a fourth and goal from the 10. He got away. It is to Hanson. He is to the two. It is Long Beach State's football. That is an athlete to get away from that stunt. The left side linebacker was coming very hard that time. Didn't pay off. Got away from Rick Gonzalez. Okay, we have 4-10 to play third quarter, 24-0. BYU sitting on top of Long Beach State. So the Long Beach State defense holds. They take over deep in their own territory. Gaska from the two-yard line operating. Wilson across the five out to the seven. There's a penalty marker down on the skin part of the infield. The tackle made in there by Steve Brady and Mark Brady, his brother. 
but a penalty marker is down. This is going to be holding call against Long Beach. If accepted, it will be half the distance to the goal, which would be about the one yard line. Kind of impressed with Wilson. He's a little guy, 5'7, 180, but he really got after it and pushed it in there pretty good. <laughs> BYU has a decision. Dave Curry spent so many years at Stanford under John Ralston. Good success here. Last year, they were 8 and 3. ESPN did their ball game with San Jose State, one of the better games all year long as they won it in the closing moments. Here's our official, Roger McMinn. Curry has sent 21 players to the pro ranks since his being here at Long Beach State. First down, 11 yards to go, half the distance to the goal on the holding call. Gaska just falls on the ball, gets up to about the 50, and gets a mouthful of dirt. Look at McMahon as we watch him on the sidelines. He just went over 400 yards on that last play before, and that pass that got him down to the two yard line on the fourth down in the turnover. That's 28 out of 44 for 403 yards. He's been picked off twice. He hasn't thrown a touchdown pass, but his ball club is up on top 24 nothing. Gross. Jimmy Gross out to the seven or eight. Stopped by Tom Homo. John Carr. Or uh, Homo, rather. I like Homo. Led the whack in interceptions a year ago. He was a redshirt freshman when that rule was in. Looked good against Long Beach a year ago and also Utah. Third down six on the seven yard line. Gross in trouble. Holding himself right there, Mr. Homo again. The right quarterback, the junior from La Crescenta, right here in Southern California. And so it will be fourth down, and Long Beach State will have to kick it up, and BYU should have pretty good position as we look at Dave Curry in the sidelines. Mike Horan to cut the kick away from the back of the end zone. I like this Long Beach him. ball club, Stu. I think they're going to come along. They haven't bent or quit here today. It's been tough, but they've hung very tough. Look out. It's blocked in the end zone. Touchdown. Hey, time to see a low snap. Block a punt and then catch it, too. Was it Homo? He, he made six. three defensive plays in a row. Tom Homo blocked it. It was a low snap. Horan had to reach down, get the ball off the skin part. Homo from La Crescenta, who has just made two excellent defensive plays, comes in, blocks the kick, gets the ball in the end zone, touchdown. It's 30 to nothing BYU. Boy, you gotta like this guy. 6'3, 187. He came through there like he was shot out of a gun, blocks the punt, catches it himself. Dave Curry's face shows it all. Homo, an excellent uh, football player. He does it all. Player. He's gonna hold the ball for the extra kick for Gunther <laughs> right now, too. He also carries the water. Waters the lawn, does it all. Blocker Shetta, that's pretty close to UCLA and USC, but he's playing football in Provo, Utah, doing a job. Gunther's extra point effort is good. It's a 31 0 ball game with their 22nd first down. Bryce Wilson, Bill Irvin back to take the kick now. That young man about to place it down is Mr. Gunther, who's accounted for a field goal and a four, four extra point efforts. And he kicks it in the end zone every time, and the ball starts on the 20. Let's see if history repeats. Got two minutes, four seconds remaining in the third quarter. Brigham Young leading it 31 to nothing. Long Beach State has been in BYU territory only twice. Wilson fumbles it, picks it up. He'll have to run it out now. Look out, there's nothing there. And the little guy keeps on going, though. A little courage gets it back out to about the 20. Had a little trouble with the handle on the ball, recovered himself. And now it'll be first and 10, 49ers on their own 20 yard line. We look at the Long Beach State side of the field. 16th ranked Cougars of BYU riding an 11-game win streak, coming in here against the Long Beach State team, which has won seven in a row. They're going to spot it on the 19-yard line. Gaskin continues as the quarterback. Gross met dropped by Kyle Whittingham. He had it almost. Whittingham had. Uh, 
Gross almost as quickly as Gross had the football. Hometown boy. He was a fullback. And they uh, made him a linebacker. 15 tackles last year against Utah. And what's nice, we'll see his backup, who is his brother, sometime today. Good football player. Loss of two, second down, 12. The fake, Gaskin. Completes the Doug Lamb. He's just about to the original line of scrimmage, hit there by Mark Brady. I think the big issue here now for Dave Curry is to get something done as much as you can because their season they lost their opener a year ago. It's no time to panic. They're going to be a good football team in the PC2A. They're just out horse today. But the main thing is don't get anybody hurt now because this ball game the way BYU is controlling it would appear to be over. I want to ask you a question after this next play just a second third down and ten. Whether there's any significance in the way this game is being played by Long Beach State this is. Gaska incomplete so they'll have to kick up the football the tragic death of Rod Ron settles last June who was to be their number one running back they've dedicated the season to this young man he was to be their main offensive weapon and uh, any effect you think right now could be on this ball club I don't really think so in this ball game today Stu BYU has just got so many horses but I think that something like that always affects the ball club. I was involved with a football team at the University of Colorado that lost a kid a death in preseason and that always affects you. This particular game BYU is just so strong defensively their defense has scored twice but obviously mm -hmm. you know that's on it's on people's minds. Sikahima back on his own 27 after the punt by Haran. 53 yard punt a five yard return. BYU will have the football. We've got a penalty marker down. It's a late hit. Number 48 from Brigham Young picks up the. That's Brian the penalty. Henson. Apparently he uh, got an illegal hit in. We'll watch the official. It is a clip. Lavelle Edwards can't be very happy with all the penalties. Been a ton of 15 yarders against the Cougars. You wouldn't think he's sitting on top of a 31 nothing lead right now, would you? He's saying right now, how come we don't have a split crew? <laughs> Look at that. Warming up on the far sidelines, you don't see it in your picture right now, is Doug Disney, the sophomore quarterback. I'm sorry. Disney is a uh, yeah, sophomore quarterback from Escondido behind Gaskus, so it's possible right there, number seven. So it's possible that Disney may be coming into the ballgame in the next series for Long Beach State. They're down 31 0. BYU has the football. First and 10 on their own 16 yard line. McMahon has gone over 400 yards. He's at 403 right now. Says, let's go for some more. And it is incomplete. It was intended for Plater. Covering on the play was Erwin Anderson. BYU seats about 35,000. They have plans to expand it to 50 as that football program has just taken off. Talked a little bit uh, beforehand, Stu, about their basketball. They seat 23, and, and that is uh, filled up. So they got some nice things going over there in athletics and Long Beach is a program on the move under Perry Moore. They're doing some good things. Mm -hmm. Second down 10. On the draw. They give it to Bruce Hansen, a sophomore running back from Bruce American Hansen. Fork, Utah. Gets a couple. Hit by Grand, uh, Greg Schoonover. He is the senior nose guard. And that should do it as far as the third quarter is concerned. The third quarter has come to an end. And the score at the end of three quarters of play here at Anaheim Stadium in Southern California. BYU has 31. Long Beach State, nothing. Jim, there, Mr. McMahon, right off to the right there. Over 400 yards in the air. And he has to throw a touchdown pass. Doesn't need to. So we begin the fourth quarter of play along with Herb Brown. I'm Stu Nahan. It's become a little overcast here. The skies at Anaheim Stadium, Orange County, about 40 miles down the freeway to the southeast of Los Angeles. 
home of the Los Angeles Rams and of the California Angels of the American League. That's Cosmo. Who's that? Cosmo, their mascot. I've seen this guy dunk a basketball. Pretty good athlete for him, and yeah. he's their mascot. Cosmo? <laughs> McMahon put a pretty good inside move on Daryl Harris, the tackle. Finally brought down by Eric Johnson, but able to get close to a first down. He fell short by about a yard. They'll spot the ball at the 25. He's about a yard. Pulls the chin strap down. This is what he did last year. 4,571 yards, 47 touchdowns. This year, that's today, not a touchdown, but 403 yards. So if he continues at that pace, he'll have 4,800 yards at the end of the 12 game set. You just figured that out? Yeah, pretty good mathematician. All right. <laughs> Mike Mees in punt formation. Louis Liedemeyer. Load up the right side. Let's see if they go after the kicker. Liedelmeyer on the 20. L to about the 26 yard line. A 54 yard punt by Key by Mike Mees and a six yard return with Brian Hansen bringing him down. They'll spot the ball for Long Beach State on the 26 yard line. They've had no field position at all. I don't mean those folks. I mean Long Beach State 49ers. It's been tough. We'll have a new quarterback. Disney will lead the ball club. Number seven. This is Doug Disney, the guy Stu was talking about. Uh, yes, sir. Doug Disney, he's a sophomore from Escondido. We'll tell you about him in just a moment. That is Alfred Roll. Sophomore running back from Long Beach, brought down by Todd Shell. Doug Disney, redshirted last year, will have three seasons of eligibility left. He had an excellent spring game. Set a couple of CIF San Diego station records. He was at Orange Glen High School in 1978. That's the same high school that produced a young man by the name of Sean Salisbury. Sean Salisbury is supposed to be the heir apparent quarterback at USC down the road here. The thing I like about this guy, he really understands their offense. I think he'll help Dave Curry's ball club. No gain on that last play. Disney. Flag on the play he was looking for gross problem is number 21 Tim gross moved up front instead of laterally and the referee McMinn threw the flag immediately it'll cost him five yards unless BYU declines a penalty. Dave Curry signifying from the sidelines what should we do he has to be very disappointed at his team's performance you bring a big name school like BYU in here. Southern California before the biggies like USC and UCLA get in action. They take all the headlines. And then the school doesn't play well. Look at the penalties. That's 11 that have been marched off. That's not counting three or four that have been declined. Third down, 10 on the 26. Gross. Ridden down by Kyle Whittingham. Got two, fourth down again. Long Beach State to punt the football. Looking at the two conference races, you talk to some people and they feel the PC2A is up for grabs in the WAC. BYU, the favorite, get a real test this year from Hawaii over in uh, Hawaii. So that'll be very interesting. Of course, New Mexico really rushed McMahon last year and beat the Cougars' first game of the year. Sikahima back, around the punt away. Sikahima, somewhere around the 27. You know where he's from? He's from Tonga. 45 yard punt. Sikahima, he's from Tonga out in the South Pacific. We have a new quarterback for BYU. It is Steve Young, a sophomore from Riverside, Connecticut, taking over for young Jim McMahon. And on the very first handoff, it is Sikahima. Sikahima with Kevin Ray getting a handout to spill him as he gets out to the 40 yard line a pickup of 13 yards on the play and it'll be first down. That is young Mr. Young. That was a good looking sprint draw. Sikahima really showed some lateral movement 
The hole was clogged up off the left side. He just countered back and almost broke it. Went to Greenwich High School in Connecticut, lives in Riverside, Connecticut, was the outstanding offensive freshman from the 1980 BYU squad, getting a chance to get in some playing time now. First down, BYU, young, a southpaw. Intended for Balholm, broken up in there by Irvin Anderson. For McMahon, unless he doesn't come back, in case he doesn't come back, 28 out of 45, 403 yards, no touchdown throws, but he was picked off twice, and that came early in the game. And a different deal for the Brigham Young receivers now. Young is a left-hander, and the ball spins differently. Might take a little time to get used to things. Young, later, out of bounds in midfield, close to a first down. Kevin Ray over there again. Ray has played a strong game at senior cornerback out of West Covina. West Covina, number 22. I've been impressed with their defense, period. They're going against a ball club that has so many ways to hurt you, and yet they've hung in there pretty tough, particularly that secondary. There have been some great catches for BYU against decent coverage. Third down, less than a yard. Clock showing 11.45 to play. 31-0. Brigham Young leading. They led at the half, 17-0. They've scored twice more in this second half. Jumping off, getting back, left side of the Long Beach State line. First down appears to have been made, but there are, do I see any penalty flags? No, he got back in time, so it is a first down for BYU. Daryl Harris making a hit. Dave Curry in the sidelines figuring, regroup, fellas, regroup. Long Beach State. Young. It's complete to the 30-yard line to Sikahima. And there the young man from Tonga sits down. But he's got himself a first down. Sikahima, born in Tonga, went to, uh, his parents both went to the BYU campus in Hawaii. Went to uh, Mesa High School. Mesa, Arizona. Had an 83-yard punt return against SMU in the Holiday Bowl game. He's lined up a tailback now. If they give him the ball in the sprint draw, good things happen. He's looked very good. Now they shift. First down to the 30-yard line. Should be a penalty marker for backfield in motion. Bruce Hansen carried. Second Somebody was didn't going get for him. Set. Yeah. The guy we're talking about. Dan Worthington in on the hit. Clock stop at 10:31. As we look at Lavelle Edwards, pretty confident that he's got this one wrapped up. Five yards for a legal procedure can be marked off. First down, 15 to go. Next week. BY or uh, Long Beach State has to go back to DeKalb, Illinois and play Northern Illinois. Isn't Bill Mallory coaching Northern Bill Illinois? He's been coach out of Colorado. Better tie it on. Bill's team will hit you. That is Kozlowski. Covered by Ray. Short of a first down. It'll be inside the 25 yard line. So Young trying to move this club. And that young man's been very impressive. His brother played for Bill Mallory, you mentioned a moment ago. Yeah. And his brother's one of the best competitors I've ever been around. Didn't have that great speed. All he'd do is go out and beat you. They spot the ball at the 24 yard line. It is second down. It is four to go. We have 9.45 to play. BYU has had 25 first downs while holding Long Beach State to only six. Sikahima. John Carr. Loss of a yard back on the 25 yard line. Carr really came up on that toss sweep and played it like you're supposed to. Looked exceptional. His job was uh, to turn it in. 
This is a two-time all-conference performer when he was a junior college player. Very smart, a leader, and he'll help this ball club as the season progresses. BYU next week will host the Air Force Academy at Provo. Young. Complete at the 20-yard line to Plater. Anderson making the stop. BYU's third game of the year. They play UTEP. I've got a son that plays safety down there. You think he's going to have UTEP. a long evening? I think so. With McMahon. Better get a lot of rest, Michael. That's right. You know Long Beach State doesn't have a first down in the second half? They had six in the first yeah. half, and they haven't had one in the entire second half. It's really been tough. Talking to Dave Kerr before the ball game, he said it's just very difficult to move the ball against BYU. He knew what was coming. Steve Young at the controls, replacing McMahon. Sikahima, big hole. He fell down as he tried to cut at the 15 yard line. Touched there by Rick Gonzalez. Got three. Third down. And about four. The clock continues to run. It's 8.15 remaining. No sun at all here now. Sky is completely, almost completely obliterated by cloud. Never rains here in September. <laughs> Somebody once said. Got an earthquake here yesterday. Here's Young. There's a penalty marker down. So is Young at the 20-yard line. In the grasp of Thomas Woods, but there was a penalty marker down. Thrown by the linesman, it appears to be on BYU. Offside BYU. That's young Steve Young. Wide receiver Kozlowski appeared to be off one snap, uh, one snap count early. This young man was born in Salt Lake City, but then moved back to the East Coast. Lived in Riverside, Connecticut. And Jim McMahon had some kind of an afternoon 403 yards passing outstanding third and 11 on the 19 yard line BYU leading at 31 to nothing young would like to get some points on his side of the ledger and he fights his way forward down to about the 11 yard line short of a first down. Rich Gonzalez got to him. He gave a head slap to somebody who was about to make a tackle on him. I'm kind of impressed with the left hander. If you lose your lanes against him, he'll hurt you too. Don't knock left handers. Look what happened to Harry Truman. <laughs> Ball is on the 11. They got to get to the nine for a first down. It's going to be fourth down and two. Lavelle and wants a timeout. Going to talk it over. Yeah, call the young man over and let's have a consultation. 31 to nothing. Fourth down and two. And Lavelle Edwards on the sidelines talking things over. He will talk things over with his young quarterback when he comes over. I mentioned some assistant coaches from both staffs for uh, BYU. Norm Chow, Dick Felt, Roger French, Garth Hall, Mel Olson, Tom Ramage, Ted Toler, and Fred Whittingham. We'll get to uh, Long Beach in a minute. Fourth down two. Young incomplete in the end zone. Ball will be turned over. It was Gordon Hudson did it for. That's John Carr who broke it up, and Long Beach State will take over. So, with seven minutes to play in the football game, Long Beach has the ball, but they're trailing BYU 31 to nothing. Okay, Long Beach State taking over. They've held the BYU twice now inside the 15-yard line on fourth down situations. Last time they did it, they wound up in a block punt. Oh. A hit by Whittingham on Wilson. Hello. Somebody answered the phone. We talked about Whittingham's father, assistant coach. Let's uh, mention the coaches for uh, Long Beach right after this. Look at Whittingham's hit. Just a reverse pivot dive, and here he comes. That's what a middle linebacker is supposed to do. Nobody blocked him, and he killed him. Second and ten on the 11-yard line. Look at that story. Ten to nothing in first downs in the first half. 
Disney's pass is deflected in the air and incomplete. Pass was instead of intended for Daryl Stokes, and it was broken up by Mike Jensen. Yes, you were saying well, something. Well, those 49 49er assistant coaches, and of course, any assistant coach in college just works his tail off. Dave Nichols, the offensive coordinator, Kenny Vincent, the defensive coordinator, Dick Jones, Robin Ross, Gene Zeller, Vernon Henry, and Jerry Rodriguez. You put in a lot of time when you coach as an assistant in college. A lot of recruiting, a lot of nights, a lot of meetings. Bill Irvin, Louis Littlemeyer, now in the ball game. And a timeout has been called. What happened here? Timeout is called by BYU to stop the clock. Trying to get some people in as they're taking a look at a lot of new folks. Dave Curry would like to get one on the board. A little morale builder going into that Northern Illinois football game. Just been very difficult. They haven't been able to move it a lick. No first downs. Nothing's happened in the second half. Dave Curry is one of the most honest, candid football coaches you're going to see anywhere. You ask yes, him any is. kind of a question, he'll give you an answer, whether it's controversy or one of the very honest gentlemen. He's a native of Southern California, went to high school right here in South Pasadena, went to Stanford University, in Alabama. He played in Bobby Bowden, who's now the current head coach of Florida State. And he is very proud that a lot of players who play for that man that we're looking at right now get their degrees in college 23 of 27 seniors from his 1980 club will earn degrees beautiful sunshiny afternoon relatives of our producers sitting in the sidelines over there <laughs> third down and 10 on the 11 yard line whoops almost slip and fall down Disney maintains his aplomb gets it out to about the 19 yard line where the touch is made there by uh, Todd Shell. He's had a pretty interesting afternoon, Mr. Shell. He's running one back. Touchdown, interception. You like to see your defense do something, make some turnovers, make it happen. And today, BYU has scored twice. Shell and Homo have both scored. So uh, it's been a good day for the 4-3 uh, defense of the Cougars. And the BYU defense again shutting off Long Beach State, who hasn't had a first down the second half. Arana's back to kick. Sikahima is back there in midfield, the lone safe man. And Horan hangs this one deep. Sikahima dropping back. The man from Tonga fumbles, picks it up, and whoop, fumbles again. We got a loose football. And it's finally fallen upon by Todd Shell, number 47. It's a 56 yard punt. The hit was made by Alfred Rowe that forced the fumble by Sikahima. Watch Rowe has it. done a good job on special teams and also blocking offensively. Sikahima drops it once. He'll pick it up. The wall was to the left. Looked pretty good because he only had one man to beat. Here's the hit by Rowe. Good contact. Yeah. Good form tackle. We're getting some pretty good stats and spotting right now, too. You notice how quickly the stats come to me from Dennis Munition? The yeah. spotting, I don't want to talk about him. Look at the 230 yards in the second half. Long Beach State's had only 22. Young pass. Knocked down. Putting a hand up there and knocking that ball down for Long Beach State was number 73, Daryl Harris. Our spotting effort today has been done by one Mark Stewart Nahan. We must get it to him. That sounds familiar. Is that the heir to your fortune? That's the guy. He's in the will. Ah. He's in the will. That's Steve Young's story since he came in to replace McMahon, four out of eight for 45. You got a young man playing at UTEP. I got one standing back here telling him what I should do out here today. Young on a delayed draw. They give it now to Bruce Hansen. Sophomore running back carrying it out. Lavelle Edwards going to his bench now. The clock showing five minutes, 17 seconds to go. Ken Fall makes the stop. He's the backup inside linebacker behind David Howard. Even though this thing is over, that play is a very important message for people looking at BYU on film in future ball games. They do have a draw to slow down the rush, and that's why you see a play like that with the 31 to nothing score and the ball game over, 4:58 to go. It's a message for the future. About 21,000 fans in attendance here at this ball game. Red Doggin, young in trouble, and he's hit. Good pursuit in there for Long Beach State. The man that was chasing him was Kenny Fall. He's a junior from right here in Anaheim. And he made pretty good pursuit of that quarterback. He shot the gap pretty well. Four and a half minutes to play. That comes, there comes Young off the field. So BYU will have to kick up the football. It's a fourth and nine on the 29 yard line. 
and BYU who led at halftime 17 to nothing leading at 31 to nothing now. Littlemeyer deep. Mike Mees to do the punting. Should have a return left or a middle return on here. And Long Beach State ought to have good, pretty good field position for a change. They really haven't had it all afternoon. Big rush. Short kick, 45 yard line. Ball taken by John Carr. It'll be first and 10 at the 45 yard line. 31 yard punt, no return. Penalty marker down. Offside. Long Beach State, so BYU will get to kick it again. That's uh, too bad because they did have some field position, and I was going to comment to an important time for Long Beach. Even though the ball game's over, you want to do something to leave on a positive note. It's like a golfer who makes one shot, one putt at the end on number 18 to bring them back. They got another ball game next week, nine more after that, and they need something positive because uh, they've been out horse today, and the better ball club has won this football game, but they want to close up strong. So BYU will get to kick off one more time. It's not been a good afternoon for Southern California Orange County football teams. Fullerton, which is right close by in Anaheim, they were beaten football game by Wyoming 28 to 7 today. This kick takes a bounce, and it is finally Lidlmeyer at 40 yard line. So they actually lost 15 yards in field position when they take over. That's a 37 yard punt with about a couple yard return. Mike Jensen makes the hit. We've got 351 to play in the game and BYU leading Long Beach State 31 to nothing. Right there that young man is the Vitalis player of the game. Yes there's no question about that is there. Irv? Not in my book he's been outstanding 400 yards through the air. Most valuable player of the game. Well, he's had a pretty good afternoon. And I bet she's disappointed knowing him, though. The stats on him for that's three not yards. Jim McMahon we're talking about right there. That number three is Scott Colley. That's not McMahon that we're looking at. Right, that's one of the guys who's been catching the football. Yeah. That McMahon has thrown no touchdowns, and I got to believe Jimmy's a little disappointed. Still got to ask you while uh, this thing is, is winding down. Is Danny Ainge going to uh, jump and play uh, basketball? There is a, some sort of a talk of a suit right now between the Boston Celtics and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Maple Leafs and, and the Celtics trying to fight over this young man's services. Danny Ainge, a fine basketball player, All American. That's Wilson. Bryce Wilson. They got a first down. Long Beach State just got a first down out to the 45 yard line of BYU. That's the first one they got in the second half. I like Wilson. Runs well. Continuing with the Ainge thing. He was a wide receiver mm -hmm. in high school. Eugene, Oregon, a great athlete. Of course, uh, something special at, at BYU. It'd be interesting to see what he does. Well, they started him out at third base. They had him playing at second base for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. And the Celtics would love to get him. I tell you, they drafted him even though he announced he didn't want to play pro basketball. Now there's a tug of war for services. He's not hitting well with Toronto. Wilson again. Bryce Wilson. Okay, that's McMahon right there. That's young Jim McMahon, the senior quarterback, and that's his statistics, and that's why he was named the Vitalis Most Valuable Player in this contest. 403 yards last year, 47 touchdowns, over 45 yards, 4,500 yards thrown. He's coming right back, and I mean, uh, even though he, if he's got any disappointment. It can't be. His club is winning 31 nothing. He threw over 400 yards. He didn't throw a touchdown pass. But his perfections. He had a couple of interceptions. Yeah. Uh, I got to believe Jim uh, will not be that happy. And one was called back, wasn't it? Early in the game, a touchdown pass. I think it was. Penalty. Okay. Disney's at the controls. Disney fakes the gross. Disney winds up. He throws it up in the air. A dying quail. The catch is made over there by Littlemeyer at the 10-yard line. We've got him two minutes to play in the game. It's going to be a first down. Should be a goal to go situation for Long Beach State. That's a 35 yard play. The hit is made by Brian Hansen. And Long Beach State with its deepest penetration right now. And of course, you got reserves on the field for both teams at this particular time. Long Beach State has not been shut out since UOP, University of Pacific up in Stockton, did it in 1978. That was the third game of the season, 14 to nothing. And they're trying to avert that score right now. We've got two minutes to play. Gross slipping, falling down, getting up, but his knee touched down back in the 12. 
In college ball, you have to have contact made by the opposition. Here, if your knee touches, no matter what, and that ball is very treacherous going on that skin part of the infield, as we mentioned earlier, this field used by the California Angels in the American League who are on the road right now. Rams use the same field tomorrow in their regular season opener against Houston. See if there's a little play action or a little roll to get away from the hard rush. Get Disney outside. Split back, so it looks like a drop back situation. Second goal on the 11. There it is. Turns it on, throws it up, and it's complete. Touchdown. Stokes. Penalty marker down. Darrell Stokes caught the ball. Got a late shot from somebody. I think it was Mike Jensen after he caught it. But it's going to be against BYU, I'm sure, for a late hit afterward. Let's see. Interference called against BYU. The touchdown goes. And so Long Beach State, with a little moral victory here, gets off the shutout with a minute and 21 seconds to go. They score as Disney with a touchdown pass to Stokes. I like yards. his size. I like his size. He's 6'5. They didn't get shut out. I mentioned the UOP game. So they can hold their heads up a little bit. A lot of football left to be played. Uh, no surprise if BYU won today. It's a good football team. And yet I think Long Beach will be very competitive in their league. They can play with San Jose and Fresno and Utah State. They won it last year with a 5-0 league record. It'll be interesting. Hey, they're the only BCA school to have beaten Utah State twice since they joined the conference in 1978. Yeah, Bruce Snyder's got a good program. That's right. Dave Curry. Under his coaching ages, 23 school records have been broken or tied in the last four years. So Disney goes to Stokes for an 11-yard touchdown pass. It comes with a minute and 21 seconds to go in the game, and it's now 31 to six. They try for the extra point. They'll go for the two-point play. Out of the power eye, let's see if they uh, stick it in the fullback's belly and roll out to the right. That would appear to be the set that they're going to use. Got to believe it'll be a little play action to get outside with Disney. Throwing on the well, they got a roll in there. Gross. And he's going to throw it. Disney. And he overthrows everybody. The tie. There's a penalty marker down. It was the tight end Jim Donnelly covered by Mike Jensen. And who is the penalty going to be called? A little transcontinental. That's going to be interesting to see who it's on. Let's see if they've got Long Beach for pushing off. BYU interference. They'll go again. Only they'll mark it off half the distance first. You know, that's the kind of play you wouldn't want to see out in the middle of the field, that transcontinental. That goes the other way for six most of the time. <laughs> yes. By transcontinental, you're talking about everybody going to the right, and then you're throwing across the grain and against the grain and to your left. You do it on an extra point when you either get it or you don't, but you do it in the middle of the field. Normally, it winds up at the other end if the defender plays uh, his zone. They're going to get that ball off the skin part of the infield, I think. Give somebody a chance to set it down in the green grass over there. Got a minute 21 to go. 26 first downs for the Cougars. Eight for Long Beach State. They didn't have a first down until this drive. Roll. He gets the two point extra point effort. So it's a 31 to 8 ball game. Alfred Roll taking it in. He's a sophomore from Long Beach State. Let's take one more look at that touchdown now by Stokes. All right, Stokes is a bump and run one on one. Disney lays it up there. Remember, you got a 6'5 guy going against a six foot one inch cornerback. Stokes is a good leaper, goes up, makes the play. There is the interference. It doesn't matter. And now we should be set for the onside kick, which I assume we'll get. Good time to practice that. Yes, sir. And you know, Stu, the best way to do it, I'm convinced, is to bump it up the middle. Everybody uh, defenses it to the right. There'll be a hands team in for BYU. They'll put in skilled people right now looking for it. And if you can bump it down the middle, there's a lot of gaps there. Okay. Kicking off for Long Beach State now will be Guy Johnson, a junior from San Juan Capistrano. It's 31 to 8 with a minute and 21 seconds to go in the game. BYU will send uh, Sikahima back. They will also bring back uh, Bruce Hansen. That's Hansen, number 34. That's Guy Johnson. 
We haven't seen him throughout the game because Long Beach State has not had to kick off prior to now. This is the hands team. Nine people in the 40 yard line. There it comes. They're going to their left. <laughs> they try the onside kick. Big pile up around the 48 yard line. They're going to have to pile, unpile everybody. BYU has the football. Covered by Kevin Walker, I believe, on the bottom of that pile. Let's try that onside kick again. Everybody shifts over at the last moment. Here it is. You got to bump it. You got to get a break here. Hit somebody in a kneecap. Pretty good pair of hands by number 92 as he's able to hang on pretty tough. And that is Jim Herman, who's a defensive end. Scoring drive for the 49ers. Six plays, 60 yards, 11 yard touchdown pass. Disney to Stokes. 31 to 8. Young putting it in the midsection. Uh, Blair Boswell, a running back, tackled by James Galloway. Boswell, he's from Ogden, Utah, a senior, 5'10", 183 pounds. And Mr. McMahon doing an interview before the ball game is over. Somebody's got a late bulletin to catch somewhere. There's a, <laughs> there's a stringer talking to Jim McMahon. Vitalis, most, most valuable, valuable player. player. 40 seconds to go in the game and counting. Young, southpaw. Gonna have to run with it himself. Going against the grain. He gets out of bounds at the 40 to stop the clock. He also gets himself a first down. Run out there by Michael Dunvin, defensive lineman. Dunvin's had a decent day. He's played very well for the 49ers. Looks like he'll help out. It's such a young ball club. You look through their press guide, and, and most of the comments are uh, didn't see any action but has potential. They just graduated a bunch of people. It's going to take a while till they get to know each other. BYU with its 37, 27th first down. Lead at 31 to 8 with 32 seconds to go in the game. Hansen to the 35 yard line. That should do it. Yeah. BYU wants to stop the clock, and I would doubt if Lavelle would do that to Dave Curry. You can see 20 seconds left. I don't think Lavelle will do it. They may get. One more play runoff. It's second down and six and a 35. Ten seconds to play in county. Young wants to break that huddle. You better hurry up. Five seconds. They come up. Four, three, two. They'll never do it. This ball game is history. BYU opens the 1981 season with its 12th straight victory, snapping a seven-game win streak of Long Beach State by defeating the 49ers of Long Beach State by a score. Of 31 to 8 as the Vitalis player of the game is that man right there, quarterback Jim McMahon. <laughs>